Hey, today we got one of the OGs of MMA in the house tonight, man. We got Tyron Woodley. I, I made sure I said his name right because I got a cousin named Tyrone, and the first time I called him that, he cussed me the fuck out. <laughs> What's up, OG? What's up, man? Now, this the OG, because when I was coming up, I was a wrestler, so he was the original slam people knock him out. <laughs> I never got to do it, but I always want to knock a nigga out and just slam them down with a takedown. Why, why you didn't do it? You a better wrestler I than thought, me. I thought about it, but like it looked like you tried to do it. Like It was your goal. Yeah, yeah. Like, in my, it, like when I was training, I never really thought, like, let me pick you up and slam you and knock you out. Let me pick you up and slam you and just, you know what I mean? Yeah. Let the crumble, cookie that, crumble where I do. That was my thing, because, you know, I, I, I used to want to be a pro wrestler. That's why I got. That's how I got into uh, wrestling. And when I when, when I signed up for wrestling in high school, I thought it was pro wrestling because you know I did too. Yeah, when Memphis too. Memphis wrestling just wasn't big. Then yeah. we moved to like a, a better part of, of of Memphis, and they had wrestling on. on why you don't say music? Music, music. I've been in, I've been in California twenty years. Over I've 20 been years. say my my dogs. A lot of my homies that are like in music and songwriting and stuff. They are from Memphis, but they got that that country slang yeah, like yeah. music. I'm like, yeah. What when music? I moved here. I, I had to um, adapt really, really fast because people I trained with, I trained, you know, I moved to Huntington Beach. I was the only black guy in the fucking gym. No one understood me, bro. Yeah, I got it. So I had, so I had to adapt really quick and change my accent. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Um, you remember Fabiano Iha? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I remember the guy that got me started fighting. Um, he had to translate because uh, Fabiano was the first. Uh, Fabiano was the first um, Brazilian guy I ever met. So this whole time he's translating English from English. Uh, I couldn't understand Fabiano, and he couldn't understand my my wow. English, so he had to translate. I yeah, made your own language. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Bear? Yeah, uh, it's good to be here, dude. Two champs <laughs> sitting across from each other. It's been amazing uh, ride with this guy. I've known him for years, like ten years. I think the first time I met Woodley was uh, with Dambles Arian. Yeah, they was they was out there paintballing with no shirts on. Oh yeah, that's my, crazy. My, they I never they smart. never told me that when you raise your hand, that's that's how you admitting that you out. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, you hit me. All right, all right, all right I'm out. But they just kept blasting me because they thought I was trying to troll and I raised my hand. So I got I got hit everywhere. He, he never wanted to walk off the field. Dan Bozarian's like, yo, you bring this guy out here, this <laughs> champ. This guy doesn't want to get off the field. I'm like, yo, Willie, when you get shot, you got to put your hand up. You got to walk <laughs> off the field. <laughs> nah, nobody told me that. So I got I got unnecessarily smashed with the um, paintball gun. Oh, man, this same shit happened to me the first yeah. time I paintballed over at his park. He had people... Still shooting me while I was down. I got to get back out there because yeah. I feel like I feel like now I'm kind of like a little bit more equipped. You think you're ready? Skills, yeah. That was a, that was a crazy time. I think there was like a massive party at Dan Arian's house the night before, yeah. and then Woodley was like, "Yo, I'm gonna come out there and play with you guys." It was at my SC Village Park in Chino, and then Woodley showed up. There was like ten Rolls Royces. Everybody was playing, and that was a uh, Lynn. Yeah, so Wood- my dog Lynn. Yeah, Woodley has, has a friend who who's a mutual friend of ours. His his name's Lynn, and he's like a producer and a stuntman and a director and like yeah. a movie like just you know a list elite guy who kind of like just puts together some of the most insane movies i think he did straight out of compton straight out of compton um, cobra kai yeah a lot of different films yeah oh yeah I, jack I, reacher you yeah. know you know lynn oh, you yeah. just you i've seen him in a couple of videos with you in ufc because you know arnold the ball yeah, yeah 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 they, that's the one in two points oh, yeah. back in the day when you in cobra kai i think i saw your yep. episode yeah yep. since they did i shot my damn finger off <laughs> that was a that was actually a crazy time because you were in Cobra Kai as like you were doing like that kicking scene yeah. and then you were in Shred Out of Compton. Yep. Yeah, I don't think people I, know you know you're straight no, out of Compton. I didn't cause I no, still I was T Bone from I the Lynch Mob. You ain't never seen it. I still no, haven't seen that one. It's it's in my opinion, when I think of like the classic movies like a Boys in the Hood, New Jack City, I feel like it was such a real movie for like right now. It'll take five or ten years, but it's gonna fall in one of those categories. Not so it's real? definitely one I would look. I heard it was really good, but I don't no, know I was why hard. I saw it. Yeah, he was like he was like a like a bodyguard for uh, Ice Cube, I think, right? Yeah, I was with the Lynch Mob, so I was T Bone. So when the, uh, when Ice Cube left uh, NWA, he went to his own group, which was the Lynch Mob. So mm-hmm. I was like one of the top dogs in this deal. So when he left away, he did his own thing, and that's when they had all the beats to No Vaseline. So I kind of really learned the history of it because. As we was filming that, crazy enough, as we were filming that, we was doing a lot of stuff with the riots. But at that same time, the riots were actually happening in my home city, which is Ferguson. Mm. So I was filming it on TV, but it was really actually going on at the same time in St. Louis. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. And you guys got like a crazy fight on the escalators in that movie. Yeah. Did did you have to train for that fight? No, you you know what's funny about that scene? (laughs) It's a scene, no, dead ahead. (laughs) We did have to train for it. I'm going to tell you why. It's going to be funny. Because my dog, Lynn, he's come from like, 
when him Eve Evers was his buddy. That's yeah. how I met Lynn. Oh, okay. Eve Evers and him used to fight bare knuckle in Indiana and uh, Houston, Texas, right? Yeah. That's when you can punch in the chest and like had different rules. So he was fighting on that league, and then Eve helped him do a stunt reel to get him in Texas Ranger. So he felt obligated to help Eve out in his career. So then he found me on MySpace. In 2003. He took it back to MySpace. No, he found me on MySpace because I was doing a wrestling camp. It was called Nation's Best Wrestling Camp. That don't mean it was the nation's best. That's just <laughs> what the dude called it. So he's like, this dude, a wrestler, all-American. He looked like he doing some amateur MMA. Let me hire him and bring him out to train Eve. Because Eve was at the top of the game. That, but he was losing to like Joe Stevenson and guys they couldn't stop wrestling. So I got brought in as a wrestling coach. I was just doing it like... To do it for fun. And you wanted to fight Chandler, No, Chandler gassed me up to do it. He was a freshman in college. Askren gassed me up to do it. He was a soft. I was a senior. I had graduated, and I was a wrestler. So I'm like, all right, let me just try this MMA shit out, right? I sent, I knew all the dudes from the Ultimate Fighter show. They all was uh, Rashad Evans. They used to wrestle Michigan State. We used to compete against them. Uh, Gray Maynard, um, Mike Whitehead was my teammate in college. Brad Imes is really Brad Smith, but he changed his name because the quarterback was kind of going viral. He was my strength and conditioning coach at Mizzou. So I knew so many people, and I'm like, damn, let me just give it a try. But I really started as a coach. I was just uh. kind of training the ops on how to stop the wrestlers from slamming them. How you get all that knockout power just being a wrestler? Double leg. I had a double leg takedown, and it's the same exact, you know, same exact power you generate. You see it real quick, and you go to it as fast as you can. Yeah. Hey, I, I'm sorry to have to ask you this, but um, I know you probably signed NDA, but blink twice if that Jake Paul fight was set up. <laughs> blink twice. <laughs> I know you probably. I don't never that. blink because I got these liberty eyes. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't need much air, you know what I mean, to keep them open. A lot of people wonder that, but think about this: if I say Rampage, I'm gonna pay you two million bucks, right? Let this dude beat you. What you gonna do? You gonna feel disrespected, number one. Yeah. Right. That ain't enough money. Yeah. But exactly. I got paid in the Jake fights. For me to do that, gotta I gotta be willing to walk away for good, and it gotta set me up for a while, at least not for life, but something like twenty something million where I can invest it and be and fall off in the shade because that's what you would have to do. But I do something like that. You would have to know me to know I'm too solid of a guy to even have somebody walk to me and ask me. Yeah. What happened to me is what was gonna happen to him had he dropped those hands. Before we fought, I said, "Hey, you can knock me out, and I can knock you out, and I'm gonna try to fuck you up tonight." And I hope you come with the same energy because watch when I fight, I do the best when people are the craziest. When it's a Carlos Condon, when it's a Robbie Lawler, sorry, when it's a Darren Till, when it's people that are quote unquote on paper supposed to beat me, I do the best in the chaotic storm. So I engaged that war for him to come at me like he did. And he, he caught me with a shot. I thought he was going to throw the overhand because that's my punch. And I'm like, I ain't going to throw it. The second I say he ain't going to throw it, he threw it. It kind of like he delayed it and then threw it. Yeah. He threw a punch. He committed to it. He landed it. That's the I watched that over and over, man. Cause yeah. I, you know, I had to watch it over and over, too, because my hands been up so high with my coach. Like He made me hit the bat for 45 minutes straight the day before. If I dropped it, we start the clock over. So I know it wasn't like something in training that we didn't do. But I think I was beating him. And I told him, I said, you're going to look out of shape. I promise you. I said, I got two weeks notice. I was filming Cobra Kai. Filming from whatever in the morning to like two or three at night, right? Oh, yeah. You was a, you yeah. was a villain. Somebody pulled out or something, didn't it? Uh, Tommy Fury. Oh, right? yeah. So then I would rap on film at two in the morning, eat some food. My boxing coach, my whole team flew out to Atlanta. We were going to train at three or four in the morning, right? He was used to that lifestyle. He was doing that with Floyd. So we trained for two hours after that. Then I slept for a little bit, got back up, and I filmed again. I was doing it for two weeks straight. Mm -hmm. Then they didn't wrap my scene up, like the whole scene when they cut my finger off and shit. They had to redo that because I'm in that scene. I'm the top um, sensei. Mm -hmm. I'm running like the goons, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm not in that. Everything they filmed before that, you know how film worked. The yeah. continuity doesn't exist anymore. They would have to either reshoot everything. So I committed and I stayed later. Yeah. You, know, you know how fight week is. Yeah. Go say bye to your family, hug them up. You know what I mean? Dip off on a Monday or Tuesday. And that's fight week. I didn't leave Atlanta to Tuesday mm. night, Wednesday morning. Oh, wow. So that's, that's not why it happened. But I knew in my mind it was the right choice to make to take this fight. It was never supposed to be Tommy. He never won the first fight. It was supposed to be me from the jump, right? So I was I was committed to it. So when we fight and you commit to walking in there, no matter what you felt like, no matter what your mind at, no matter if you was going through a divorce, no matter if you was injured, when we signed to fight, 
we assume the risk of everything that was on the table, right? And win, lose, or draw, you walk in, you walk out. I hate when the dudes be, oh, I had this, I had that, had that. You should have said that before. You shouldn't have took the fight. Right. Right? Right. Both fights. Mm-hmm. Right. So in, in, in reality, can I really be mad because he did to me what I was going to try to do to him? Do I crawl up in the ball and forget what I was? I was always a person that wasn't supposed to do it before right. I even started the UFC. I was the one that was never supposed to make it from the jump. Right? Right. right. I grew up the same way you grew up, gangbanging, beating people up. That's what I did, right? That road does not end up being alive or not in jail, right? So now, once again, I'm in the familiar territory, and it's just what people are saying. Somebody said, oh, you coming back? I said, I never left. I just let people that talk, talk, because they know everything anyway. I can prove the 10 people that got my back for real, for real. I can prove them right, or I can spend unwanted hours. One of our one of our most valuable assets. I used to say time was our most valuable asset. It's not. Wisdom is. Right? Because right. you can be having all the time in the world and be dumb as hell and working hard and not smart and not get no shit cracking, right? Right. So I said, I'm not going to waste one of my most valuable assets time trying to prove people wrong. Right? Right. I know what it is. And every time somebody said it wouldn't, if it ended up happening, who cares? What do you think is going to happen Saturday? What do you think? I'm going to watch. <laughs> and then I'll know. Get to some knowledge and get quit thinking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, two wings, three wings, four wings. No, I, oh, okay. I would never do that. Oh, okay, I I just wanted to ask a lot of people was was saying that, and then it made me go back and um and watch, watch it. it. Yeah, it made me go back and. But watch then it. they make you want to go and watch. Yeah. So which that that's I can't pull a hat trick from the young man. I don't make my money because because at the end of the day, when you're doing business like this, any fight you take now, if you fight the gentleman you said out there, I don't know what y'all doing with that. If y'all do that fight, right? Right. Y'all business partners. Right. Off the top. Yeah. You might try to knock his ass out, but at the end, of, you are in business with him. Right. It behooves you not to make everybody understand why it's important for you to punch the dudes across from you. Yeah, I feel you know my, my last fight when, when I fought Fader, I was so out of shape and everything I fucked up. Everybody thought I took a dive, and they thought yeah. I, I took a dive like even before the. They, they think I didn't even train. I actually trained super hard for that fight. Yeah. We just had some medical issues. And I got knocked the fuck out. Yeah. And, and, and people, see what it's saying with me. I wanted you to win so bad that I wanted to think that maybe you took a dive. A lot of people, a lot of people wanted me to win for them. A lot of them wanted me to win because it felt like he was clout. But the funny thing is, if it was clout, you gave the culture to him. You got him in the studio with you, right? right. Mm. You got him. You 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 want his platform. You yeah. want his market, and you're willing to gift it, right? right? Look at all the celebrities that are on Jake Paul team right and just so to be honest i don't have a problem with jake paul i can't because when i signed the contract you're not a friend to me you're not an enemy to me you're a business partner to me now you know what i signed up to do when i did this that means i'm gonna try to fuck you up yeah that's off the top you signed that i signed that we both agree to that right i can't be mad over spilled milk because if it had been the other way, guess what? The same people would have had me in their studio, same people would have been trying to do music with me, same people would have been having me in their videos or like trying to get the clout. It would have ended up to another big fight. It's unfortunate, but that's the dice we roll, yeah. right? So when you go in and knock somebody out, you got to get in there and take that risk. Knockouts don't come from out here unless you like a, a longer range of your fighter. To get in there and knock a motherfucker out, you got to be willing to get hit with some shit. Right. And sometimes it wakes you up like you forget it's a fight. Like, oh, this motherfucker, you hit me? <laughs> like, you know, not supposed to hit you, right? Yeah. So that's when you get the knockouts. Koshak was coming to take my head off. He had a better overhand right. He was a more um, accredited wrestler, right? Mm-hmm. He had great cardio, had a great chin. But I knew I had to go first. If I waited, he was going to get me, right? So he threw, I put myself into the storm. I brought him to me. And when he came to me, he thought that was a a, a, a sign of retreat, but I set him up. Right? Said, that's, a, that's that ah, blonde ah, hair dude. Yeah, right yeah. I'm, I'm so glad you knocked him out. I know. <laughs> but that's funny, though. That, that, that's the world we in. Yeah. People be getting mad gratification on watching you knock somebody yeah, out. Man, cause For them, they be I, happy I, about I, it. I think the community We kind of fucked yeah. up. Yeah. You ever think about you, that? Certain people identify better with other, that's why you become their fan and not the other person's yeah. fan so i think i get well that because the whole mma was was on was with you though yeah. everybody everybody in mma was with you and and then whoever all the youtubers they was with him but, or whatever. but think about this last week was they with me someone wasn't now because they their hatred for somebody they don't even fucking know they never met they don't put a diaper on their baby ass or take one off. They hate this kid so much. They want somebody that they last week hated 
Now they love me and they want me to go and do a job for them. Yeah. yeah and we yeah. gratifying ourselves of watching somebody lose and not get to a title shot and not get to a bigger payday, right? Right. But nobody want to hear. They want to see. So my thing is, you got to be a little numb to it, right? When I sign up, I sign up to knock out, get knocked out, win close, lose close, draw, decision, thought I won, somebody else said I lost, thought I was I lost that mother. And then randomly somebody said, now nah, get out the building as quick as you can. You got to be okay. You got to become one with that before you make that walk. If you don't, if you don't become one with that, all these dudes out here, and I don't want to mention names, they're fucking scared. It's hell before they fight. Am I lying? No, no, no. You tell me. They are scared. When I say scared, I mean like not like if somebody try to jump you outside. Oh, it started. You caught you off guard, and you got to rely. I'm talking about. Oh, I'm not sure I can, but I didn't. Uh, now you got to remind these motherfuckers. I'm talking about the top dogs because I was a top wrestling coach at one point in time. It was very hard not to hear about me as a wrestling coach at one point in time. Right or wrong? Right. Everybody was talking about me because I was. Team Quest, um, Extreme Couture, American Top Team, AKA, they all brought me in because nobody can really stop me from running through them on that double leg, right? Right. So they brought me in as a training partner to train them because they knew if they can at least stop five of the 10 I threw at them, right? They would stop the one or two that somebody that's not an All American or not as, yeah. as well as a wrestler. They would do that, right? Right. So I became the person that trained everybody. So I had to understand what I was at that time. I was a fucking bag of bones. Sparred twice, ATT. 55 and down, uh, actually 170 down in the morning, and I would come back at night, Alexia Sakara and fucking George Santiago and these two 20-pounders, I would spar their ass at nighttime because I was in good shape and I was kind of ghetto. So they used it to their advantage, and I trained like a motherfucker. Then it got to a point where I was like, fuck that. <laughs> I'm going to try, try this out. I'm in shape. I've been training. I've been fighting. I'm going to try this shit out and see if I can make a run at it for myself. Yeah. Then I said, I'm only going to train Eve because he's my dog. I got into it with him. I reserve, and I'll coach him still. And I coach nobody else. Mm. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah. Yeah, McKee told me about your, about your yeah. wrestling. You know, Antonio McKee. Yeah, McKee, McKee, yeah, McKee uh, will beat your ass, though. I ain't going to lie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I think he the best MMA coach. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll say that on record because he understands how, he understands how to to find out how your body works. He does all the, you know, these damn things. Yeah, Dumbbell, genius, down genius, two, two and a half fucking mile run before. I've been in the body yeah, shop, yeah, in there yeah. sweating, and everybody in there, they know that they supposed to put it on it, but they're not going to hurt you. Yeah. Like that's the difference. Some gyms, you go to AKA, they're going to try to hurt you because they're trying to hurt each other. If they make it out of there, they're going to probably win. That's why I stay right? out of those gyms, man. I yeah, they, they, I, you're going to get hurt. I went there before Luke Rocco was even like, nobody even knew Luke, right? Yeah, yeah. He was like on the Challenger series, right? I went to AKA to train. It was me and Phil Davis, and we was there like on the little recruiting trip. And I'm like, Shh, I'm going to go viral on these motherfuckers. I'm going to try to go crazy. I need a spot, right? So I started training. And me and this one dude was throwing each other through the rails, whatever was kind of going crazy. So then Luke, the pretty boy, little more slick back hair. I'm like, all right. <laughs> he finna get it too while he's trying to come over and help his dog out, right? So he started kicking 100% to my head, trying to break my arm off. Are you serious? Yeah. No, Luke was going ham. That, that's actually how me and Luke got tight. Because I'm like, all right, this motherfucker's trying to hurt me. Because you remember when it's not your team, you Sounds go to like like, you go to another team, they're going to try to prove a point. Yeah. I thought, but he did that to everybody. He did that on every day against his teammates. They just have to keep Luke away from people because they got a big fight coming up. He wasn't the top guy at that time. So that's when me and Luke got cool because I recognized quick, this motherfucker just got a little screw loose. He's, he's doing that to everybody. He's proving that I'm not just a pretty boy with good jujitsu because he was a, a high-level jujitsu player that can strike a little bit. He yeah. wanted to get rid of that, right? He may need to get back to it, right? I Just like I may need to get back to wrestling. We we get our top shit and we forget about it when we get a knockout or two. Yeah, I know. Yeah, because that be feeling good. <laughs> I know. That's what happened to me. That's what happened to me. You get addicted to knocking people I know, out. No, because people, they don't respond to a good setup takedown. It's such a big risk. And if you don't get it, you waste so much damn energy. But when you knock somebody down, they just drop. Like, damn. Will you ever box again, though? Yeah, yeah. Why wouldn't I? I only had two boxing fights ever. I'm not gonna box because I dropped my hand. Yeah, it hit me. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I'm I'm gonna box this year. That's cool. And I'm gonna do MMA this year too. 
Oh, that's what's up. So you're coming back to MMA? Yeah, I'm, like I said before, I never really left. I just needed. A, so you're gonna take a fight. I needed a break, to be honest. MMA is um, it's a lot on your mind because it's not like guys are fighting boxing and they got one art to focus on, and they're making two times the amount of money as us. They can go and sit down somewhere, right? Right. When we gotta do, we gotta be a top CrossFit athlete. We got to be a top boxing, striking, kickboxing, or whatever you have. And if you don't have it, you got to be able to at least defend it, right? Then you got to be at least in shape enough to get the fuck up off your back quick and get back to your feet and stop a shot. Or if you don't have that takedown ability or that striking ability, you got to be able to win close fights. And you got to do the Greg Jackson where you got, I'm here on this, I'm here. You got to do all that thing on top of stress, on top of most fighters don't have the money to afford the training, afford the nutrition. You're on your back, relax, and trying to be fucking a pretzel. And then all of a sudden, you lifting weights heavy. You're going to get injured. That's why I said outside, when people tell me you got a fight coming up in a month, I respect you before you walk in there. Because I want to see a motherfucker do a training camp first. Before you get up, before your Twitter figures get hot, before you tell me who I should fight, how I should fight, what I should do for a dollar. Because that's what you're giving us, right? If we making pay-per-view points. If you crack over 200000 am I Am I making shit up? No, no, no. Exactly. So if, if then, which is hard to do on the ESPN app, if you are cracking over 200000 you just gave me a dollar. Now, if I walk around every business and give you a dollar and tell you how to cook, how to clean, how to move, how to detail, how to engineer for a dollar, nah, bro. We appreciate. No, we appreciate when you love you, but I want you to also just take that into consideration. We appreciate the support because every dollar does add up, right? But we not coming into your world and telling you how to do your thing for a buck, right? To to keep it a buck. Right. right. So so now the mindset is just different. So when you think about your next person, it's a partnership. You want to fight somebody that's tougher because your pride says you got to fight them. But this other partner is going to make another 500,000 on pay-per-view with you because they know what the fuck to say. Right. They know how to push your buttons, but they ain't going to disrespect you to the point where you're going to fight for real. And then everybody lose their money. Because y'all too big for that. You, you hit somebody, if somebody hits you, it's going to be a cut or maybe a concussion. Y'all miss out on the seven-figure payday. I think that's what's going on with uh, Logan Paul and that, and, and that guy he fought. What's his name? Damon Dennis. Dillon. <sighs> he's, he's y'all want me on? Yeah, 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 break, yeah, break it down. Break it down. Uh, break it down. <laughs> Keep it raw, rugged, and real, please. That's what we're about. That's what the community wants Man, to hear. Man, it's y'all podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that fight? What fight? Dylan Dennis, Logan Paul. What fight? Oh, it's not a fight? I mean, I'm not saying it's not a fight, but all I'm saying is, what can I say? Where, I, where's my lawyer's at in my mind? Let me let me put my lawyer in my mind. Are you, are you, I, guess, I guess before you say some shit, yeah. you got to say, well, allegedly or some shit like that. Allegedly? Like, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Allegedly. Uh, alleg- allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly, hypothetically, potentially, could be a lie, could be the truth, anti-Rico, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. We're going to put all that on the disclaimer. I was supposed to fight KSI the 14th. In Houston, Texas. Oh, wow. We were supposed to headline the, the, the arena in Houston, right? Mm. Had to set up with my dog, Trader Truth. Shout out to my dog, Trader Truth. We had a big whole thing. So when I get a bag, I'm already freaking that bag to a million different ones. Mm. So they didn't just mess up a seven-figure payday. They messed up a seven-figure payout on the side of it mm. in conjunction with it, right? So he was supposed to fight me. And Dylan Dennis and Logan Paul was supposed to fight as a co-main event. It was a sold out arena already from the start, right? Right. So I got wind that KSI was going to maybe wiggle out of it. Because remember what happened? Logan Paul went to Saudi Arabia and he tore his MCL doing WWE. Mm -hmm. So now he's off the table. So now KSI is going to get paid the same money, the same bag. Remember we talked about the the, the partner across from you? Right. Business-wise, he was going to fight a lesser opponent, right? And make the same money. So who are you going to fight? Dylan Dennis, who's fought one or two Bellator fights ever, never been a striker, always been a jiu-jitsu guy, and ain't fought in six or seven years, or fight somebody that one of these times, we already know what he can do. It may be your ass that he let that leash off on, right? Yeah, yeah. Which one are you going to take for the I'm, same I'm, bag? I'm, I'm take the lesser guy. Lesser mm-hmm. guy, right? Yeah. Be real about that. Yeah. But don't brand yourself as a fighter that'll take, you know I'll take any any fight that'll, don't do that. Say as a business, shit, just be real, man. 
I'm going to make the same money with him. It's an easier fight. It's an easier payday. But everybody want to be tough because, you know what I mean, fight anybody, anybody, anytime, da 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 da, da whatever, whoever they want me to fight. You don't, you don't care who you fight? Who you fight is how much money you make. Right. We should never be one to fight whoever the promotion wants us to fight because it's going to make them the most money. You want to fight who the fuck you want to fight for the biggest bag because we're a prize fighter, for the heaviest bag, for the most wave generating so you could be at the top of that wave and ride that bitch out until you generate the next wave. That's how all my fights are set up that way. Mm. Nobody knew it, but look who I fought. I only fought people that was number one contenders, former champions, or former title contenders pretty much my entire UFC career. Jake, Jay, Jay Heron, don't get Jay Heron twisted. He a beast. Yeah, that mm -hmm. wasn't an easy first fight for me. Mm -hmm. He was my dog. I really didn't want that fight, but it was my first fight in the UFC, and yeah, I didn't have to. Yeah. I had to do it. Yeah, right? Do it. Yeah. He had lost to George St. Pierre close. He had won some IFL titles. He had really not lost any fights in Strike Force. He can box. He with big ass hands, and he was a good wrestler. Wrestler at Hofstra. got in a little trouble, but he he's a collegiate wrestler. Not an easy fight. Same as a Koshek fight. I had to go in and do that to somebody I appreciate. Him, Koshek, Robbie. I would say to my dogs. You know what I mean? Especially Robbie. Robbie was like, he was like a friend of the family. Like my whole family like Robbie. But are they so, your dogs when you get in the cage? No. Uh, ain't nobody my dog when I get in the cage. And sometimes you got to beat yourself. Sometimes it'd be you that you being like, well, what if this, this, what if, or if I do this and he's going to try to do it? Like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And the fight be slow as a motherfucker. And, and in your mind, you train for everything. You saw your opportunity pass yourself. So sometimes I wish I was less of my own dog and be like, why are you worried? If you go, what's the worst thing happen? You're going to end up in a scramble. You're going to win that scramble. You got the best takedown defense in the history of the UFC. You know what I mean? Nobody's going to stop you from doing what you want to do when you're moving forward. I've never lost a millisecond of a fight moving forward, ever. Only lost him moving back. I mean, that knockout, got that Koshek knockout. I'm like, damn, you bring him here? Knock him out. Or run him 31 foot across the cage because people started getting smart. Your age, it was open slams. Yeah. People started doing their action where they back was against the cage. Now it's two against one with the defense. Mm -hmm. So I backed myself up. So now I got 431 to run this double across the cage instead of, you know what I mean, getting you up against the cage and you walk, wall, walk in or, I mean, nah. Yeah. So. There's, you could tell he's a coach the way yeah. he's breaking it down and yeah. stuff like that. I mean, but no, the, the Logan Paul fight, I, I get over, the, I, I jump all over the place, but the, which is good for podcasts. Yeah. I can cut this shit up a whole bunch of different ways. Yeah. But, but the Logan Paul fight, he's taking a fight that makes sense. The kid's going to bark enough. It's not many more guys that have barked that much more where they're going to get another 100,000 buys. So for five, six million, I'd rather fight him than five, six million plus another 100,000 to fight Tyron. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <sighs> that, that's, that's, that's what it boils down to. So that fight was already going to happen in January. They just kind of bringing it back. He's known to fall through. You know what I mean? They got all, they keep bringing Mike Perry. These motherfuckers do not want to see Mike Perry. No, they don't. They do they not. They're bringing him so that they look tough. They know if this fight does not happen, Mike Perry is not going to step in to fight them. He would. And for him to just be ready, he's going to make about 50, 60 bands, right? 50 bands. So he good. Why wouldn't I? I'll go way in too. Just to, just to be ready? Just to be ready. Oh, yeah. 50 bands. It's easy. Easy. And he, he know he not he fighting. He got hands. Yeah. He got hands. But, but, I, it, make, but think, it make him look cool if they do it. I think if Logan uh, does fight, what's his name, Dylan Dennis? Yeah. I think um, he's finally going to win. He ain't won no boxing match. I think he's finally going to win. But he Ain't probably, no think. Yeah, he, he's finally he going, is going to win. He's going like, to win, but he's going to lose his marriage though. He, yeah. he, he, he lost that. That's uh, Because uh, he's trolling on, he, yeah. Yeah. on his fiance. He lost that. That's a Sometimes crazy. people are like, right, like, that's you can get popped though. for that. Like yeah. he, he, he don't. They but they pick the poison and yeah. they they're in their yeah. world. Like yeah. they like, it's not. How do I say this? You know what's funny? He he don't even want. He's low key sitting over here with the, all the juice. He introduced me to these dudes a long time ago. <laughs> he know everybody, Fuck man. that. No, we bringing this shit out. He introduced <laughs> me to Logan and Jake a long time ago. They were fans. They wanted to train with me. Bro. And I put him on my TMZ show, didn't I? Yeah, I got I got the TMZ footage. Yeah, run the clip back. Run the clip. Yeah, cause he cause he hit me up and I was like, no, nah, I said Logan, a collegiate 
wrestler, dog. Like, I don't give a fuck what kind of YouTube thing you try to put out in front. He wrestled D1 Wrestling. He plays in Ohio. Mm -hmm. That's the fourth, the toughest uh, state. Oh, oh, damn right. Ohio is tough. Damn right. Respect. He plays in that. That motherfucker can wrestle. And Jake's been following after his brother so long. They probably beat each other ass until he found a way to mm, take off in front of him. Right? Yeah. So he's been on his tail. He's been doing the same shit. Yeah, I know he knows. Yeah. I know he knows. That's guys. funny. Yeah. yeah. He FaceTime. He's texting his Jake. lawyer right now. Yeah, he, he FaceTime Jake Paul <laughs> one time. Jake, Jake, yeah. I'm telling you, Jake, I didn't tell him. Yeah. Yeah. You remember that? One time I came, uh, uh, Jake yeah. Paul was finna fight somebody. Yeah. And he was like, Won't you fight? I was like, I was like 285, 290 pounds in. He's yeah. like, You gotta fight. I said, Man, I gotta lose 100 pounds to fight this motherfucker. Yeah, that's funny. He FaceTimed the motherfucker. He said, Hey, I didn't know at the time. My barber fucked my part up that time. <laughs> shit. That was a, that was a TV <laughs> show. I, I can't even focus. <laughs> yeah. had that love of yeah. He had me with a whole that mini crib TV. sign <laughs> on my damn head. That wasn't this barber. All right, where we at? No, Shout out look, to my dog, you Barbara Matt. Right you look good right now. You look good right now. That was his TMZ show. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I had I had the little TMZ show. Called I didn't a, know that. It's called the Hollywood Beatdown with Tyron Woodley. I'm the only one that had my own show. When I co-host with them, their ratings went through the roof. So Harvey brought me and said, hey, I want you to do a show here. I said, what are we going to talk about? He said, you're not going to know until we get there. I said, bet. So I came there. They never gave me a script. I sat down. Flash cars was face down. Boom, we start the code. Hey, Tyron, what do you think about this? Damn, sh- well, I ain't the one to talk on. So it was like organic, and they they like it. We had crazy millions and millions of impressions. For real? Yeah, we well, had. What, 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 was what, good on it. What, what happened? <sighs> Nothing happened. The um the guy Evan actually left him with the Triller. No. Right, and then um it's kind of hard to do the show without him because we was kind of one and two. He was like the more conservative. I don't want to do this. I want to be nice to everybody. I'm more like, man, no, nah, fuck that. That's. Let's go after these people, right? So, um, me and him actually linking back up. So, oh, okay. do our own thing. I didn't like TMZ at first when I first learned. Yeah, about because it. it's like, don't if motherfuckers don't find out for themselves, don't be earning me out, man. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, it was kind of yeah. on that, but right. but there's so many steps that you have to get through before you can do that, like legally. Like they got to confirm to confirm to confirm to get a valid source before they can put it out. So if they do all that, somebody going to put it out anyway. And people start using it for clout. Man. My thing was, Man. I was never on it, but my show wasn't on that either. Mm. My show was like, this is already going on. I made it very clear. I don't want to be like the fighter that's got his own show and he airing other people out and like looking all peasanty. No, so so I my was shit so was mad. lit. I was so mad at TMZ. Like the first time they got me, I was kind of, um, I was kind of buzzed coming out of, out of a nightclub. I had never heard of TMZ and they asked me some questions about some some football player or some athlete that got shot in the leg and died because it took, uh, it took the, um, you know, the, um, what you call See, it? The arteries right there. The yeah, key. yeah. It took it took the emergency people too long to get there. And he, and he died. And he died. Then the second time, somebody saw me at the fair with my little sister. My little sister came out here and, and visit. And this is right when I first started getting fat. <laughs> and I was eating some fair food yeah. with my little sister. It's you look like good. A, now I've been seeing you on the internet. Yeah, I've been training. I've been training. You've been living heavy, fat. though. Yeah, I don't I don't like living heavy, but I got a coach, man. He's trying, Yeah, he, I mean, you got to submit to it. You ain't getting yeah. injured. You living. Yeah. You yeah. feeling good. But my yeah. coach, he thinks I'm stronger than what I am because I'm because I'm big, right? Yeah. He thinks I'm strong. I said, man, I ain't that damn strong because I ain't never really lift weights my whole life. People always thought. I was a weightlifter. I'd never really been in weightlifter. I never thought that. No, a lot of people, yeah. a lot of people, you know, people on the outside. I thought you just had um a lot of time African American athletes don't get really the the credit for their IQ. I thought you just saw opportunities quick and you can get there fast. No, oh, yeah. Boom. Ah, boom. Because the double leg is a big commitment. Yeah. They ain't just putting two legs on two um yeah. two arms on two legs, like knees, uppercuts, getting your head stuffed, squash, somebody spinning behind you. Before you go and pull the trigger on that shot, it's a lot to go into your mind. No, I'm really, really, I'm just a big kid. I like picking people up and slamming them. You know, I grew up in Memphis and pro wrestling was really big. And and when I got into MMA, I was like, oh, I can I can do slams. They're they're legal. I just mm-hmm. I just never wanted to you know slam people on their head. I could though, but I don't want to do nothing. Spike them. Yeah, I didn't want to hurt nobody, so I just I just wanted to make a big slam. I I, I wasn't really trying to knock people out. Even when I slammed Ricardo Arona, that, that the was one I knocked, hard. I, I was just pissed. That was my pride. first time losing that my crazy pride fight. That, that was, was my first time ever losing. No, I was my a temper. fan. On, on like not even like. I don't have no bromance. I was a I was a big fan. I appreciate because it. Because you just had you had character. You yeah. wasn't just like everybody doing the token or yeah. everybody saying what you think. You just made it exciting and like 
I remember one day me and my dogs, we just watched your interviews for like 10 minutes straight. <laughs> it wasn't even no fight. It was just like, why were you niggas okay to say that? But you couldn't get canceled. Yeah. <laughs> he could just yeah. say what he wanted to say. They still trying to cancel me from humping some white chick, but they ain't saying that when I humped that, that was Japanese one of them, chick. The interview hosts love you. Yeah, that was a that was a skit before even before there was skits. So yeah. people don't people don't know. Like she was she wanted something to, that that Remember, but she didn't want you yeah. just flirting yeah. with her like everybody else. Yeah, she wanted she to, go go to go to the next level. I said, oh, I said, say less. I got you. And <laughs> and she never complained about it. And people, my, I even wrote a book during COVID. And then they came back and said, oh, we can't publish your book because you humped some report. I'm like, OJ Simpson got a book? What the fuck? Dang. You, you know can't do saying? that one, though. Because that'd be like Chris Brown, like, but blue face, yeah. you can't. You got to hold your own. You can't, you, can't, you can't throw nobody else under the no, bus. fuck that. Yeah. Oh, He's been in California too long. Yeah, See, the, yeah, Memphis, yeah. the Memphis will tell you not to do that. No, yeah. no, no. I ain't snitching on nobody. I'm just, I was just, I'm just, I'm just, just stating shit. facts, though. I'm, just I'm stating giving facts. you shit on your own show. I know. Yeah. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. Yeah. But I was, just, I, I was just stating facts. I don't snitch yeah. on nobody, but I was like. No snitches. I was, I was like, so, because I humped somebody who didn't mind and did never complain, you don't want to publish my book. Well, God has for you is for you. That wasn't the right place. You yeah. was going to go with the wrong publishing company. Yeah. But God stopped it for you. Glass half full. So, yeah. Glass half empty. Glass that half way. full. Nobody, nobody's not going to read your story because you don't talk about it much. There's a lot of secret stuff. My story got a lot of secret stuff that people don't know about. You give them a little edge here and there of each little quarter of the book, right, that makes them interested to read, they're going to read it. Yeah, it was just... It ain't the publishing company that's yeah. going to make me pick up a Rampage Jackson book. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about just doing it myself, putting it on Amazon, but it's an MMA book. It's not even about my life. The the guy who... Like a memoir? It, it's it's kind of like a um, MMA for dummies, you know what I'm saying? That's... That, Type of thing. Kind of cool. No, yeah. it's still, it's still yeah. because it's a lot of dummies. Yeah, it's a lot of people that don't know. A lot of fans. Yeah, give me an. He got you. the craziest I, IQ. I, the I fight IQ. Yeah. My fight IQ dumb. That's what people never got about me. People never understood that about him. When I used to talk to him about fighting and going out with him, he would break down fighters. He would break down fights. So like, I know who they train with. I so know their coaches. I know their so mindset. Dynamic. I know who they look like against. When you fought against Ella Berger, when you fought against these guys, you going you going to try to fight me like you fought them. Why am I watching you fight against a six foot lanky striker that's not going to threaten you with a takedown or overhand right? I'm watching the guys. I'm bringing in only the guys that can mimic you. If I punch you in your shit, you don't just freak out right and snap back into yourself. You stay in the character. Mm -hmm. Wonder Boy wouldn't do that. Uh, you know what I mean? I want to stay in this character even though you slam me or something like that. No. Yeah. In terms of boxing, like, you know, you defended your title four times. You, you were world champion, one of the best UFC's ever seen. What type of change-up did you have to go through when you were preparing to fight Jake the first time and preparing to box? Like, is it really that dynamic? I was just so happy to box. Um, I had already, like, talked to my business partner about this. Before I did it, I was talking about being a free agent. I was talking about fighting through my contract, and I was talking about boxing and doing kickboxing and doing whatever – sport that I wanted to at the top of the level. I can fight the tops of everywhere. Nobody can ever tell me I couldn't. I can name my own price. I can promote my own stuff. I can get money on the front end, the back end, and everything in between, right? That's what we're really supposed to do. I appreciate the platform. I appreciate the ability to show I was the best because it's the belt that holds the most weight in all combat sports, right? And for me to do that against the best guys, I didn't get the super fights. I didn't get George. I didn't get Adias. I didn't get Bisbing. I didn't get, um, you know what I mean, any of those fights that would have been a good, you know what I mean, business partner to do some pay-per-views. But I didn't get George St. Pierre. I didn't get those fights, right? Those fights were all on the table, by the way, every last one of them. They were flown into the office many times from out of the country. Conor McGregor and George, nobody wanted that fight. I love to see you with Conor. Mm. Conor get that. Mm. Are, you, are you going back to the UFC when you return to MMA? Only thing that would get me to back to the UFC, the only person I would just want to beat the fuck out of is Israel Adesanya. I don't like him. Why you don't like wow. him? Because he be wearing like those pearl necklaces and shit. Nah, because he cap. I don't <laughs> like. I don't, he, How's he, he cap? Because he was never Israel Adesanya. How do I do this again? I, I got. I got. I filter myself now. I yeah. filter myself because I Israel Adesanya. I get looking the same show Tim Z. They asked me who was next up. I said, I like this Israel kid. I said, he kind of, you know, different, but he kind of got some pizzazz, right? He got his own character. He flashy. Um, but he a good martial artist, too. I said, I think he the next one to watch out for. This when he first started, right? I already gave you respect. Then they asked me, who do I want to fight? Whoever at the top. 
So you're at the top, my brother. It's a salute. I never wanted to fight Nick or Nate or uh, Bisbing or or uh, Connor or George because I thought they was weak, easy, or they was whack. I thought they was the best. To be the best, you got to beat the best. When you beat Chuck Liddell, right, that cemented you. Can't nobody ever say nothing. He can't walk around as a god in that division and you walk through him that way and they not salute you. They'll try. Yeah. But if if you really, you know what I mean? You don't and you don't even have to speak it. I can say it for you. How many times you go defend yourself and write your resume out? I want to get our athletes to quit doing that. Quit saying I'm this and I won this and yeah. I'm this and yeah. like like it's a couple athletes at the top right now that female and male, I want to just pull to the side, quit telling people how many disputed and how many da, da, da. they don't care. Right. Mm. They don't. Mm. Connor ain't never defended a belt. Mm. Once. Ever. Never defend it. When you defend, that's when you the real go. When people are coming at you and the cross her on you and they want what you got. When I was coming up, I would have beat your fucking head off for the chance to even fight. Not to make it to the UFC. I never wanted to just make it. I knew I was going to be the champion. I wanted the chance to show motherfuckers. And I thought my whole career, look at it. I want to I wanna fight Carlos Condit. I was ranked 11th. I said, no, no non-ranked opponents can fight. Then they changed the ranking system, right? Mm, yeah. One through 15. Yeah. I said, I'm ranked. Let's go. Number one versus number 11. They don't hardly do that, right? No. Nobody wanted to fight Carlos. They say he can't knock him out. He got crazy cardio. He always come, you know, towards the end of the fight, and he'll be losing, and he'll find a way to win, right? Nobody was signing up for Carlos. I'm the one that begged for Carlos. Did you, you know, fight him? Yeah. Yeah. And you beat I him? ran through him, mm-hmm. stopped him. That's how you got his belt? No, nah, that's before I... I beat Carlos, ran through him. Johnny Hendricks beat Carlo, didn't run through him, beat him, yeah. right? Carlos jumped me and Johnny and fought against Robbie Lawler mm. because of the style matchup, because of the fight, because that's what they wanted to see. Yeah. Whoever wins, they appreciate those champions. I'm not finna take a dollar less than what I'm supposed to get. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I know what I'm supposed to get because I know everybody numbers. I know two... Probably a, a ten thousand dollar mark of what everybody's making. You're not gonna pay Cowboy Cerrone this. He ain't never wore gold because I can't do it. Can't do it. I don't give a fuck how many faults he took on last minute notice. I don't care how cool he is. I don't care how he'll you know what I mean. Knock somebody out with this and that and the other. That's cool. The goal is to be the champion. Steph Curry don't have to throw a soda can at your head and throw a dolly through a fucking bus. If he can pull a three up, he's going to win the NBA championship. He's going to get paid for what he's worth, right? So if I'm doing the, the work and I'm beating the guys, I need to get paid when I'm worth. That's it. No, mm-hmm. no disrespect. How's your relationship with Dana? Is it good? <sighs> we was cool. Like, Dana, Dana know I'm not going to say nothing because, like, I am, I'm going to follow the code. Like, I'm not going to... If I had a chance to say it, it would have been the best and most influential and most inspirational when I had the belt. Anything now, unless it's a story or a memoir or something like that, it's crying over spilled milk. I look sour, right? right, right yeah. Like I said, first thing I said was I had an opportunity. That's all I asked for. I didn't ask for them to give me what they gave this person. I didn't ask for them to give me every fight I wanted. I didn't ask for the the amount of rest and time. You know when you're the champion, you don't, you ain't you don't get that rest, bro. You, you they need championship fights on every pay per view. If you got the belt, if you're not Ronda, if you're not Connor, if you're not John, you got to be ready to fight. A little bit injured, a little bit. Oh, I thought I was gonna take a trip. No, your ass got to be ready to roll. And I I did that for a long time. Like me and John are only two fighters in the history of the sport that defended what four titles in one year. Wow, that's, one year. that's crazy, man. Yeah, he defended one year. four titles. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, so I just I just trying to focus on um, what's important. Like, to answer your question, I, I'm going to reach out to Dana. I ain't talked to him in a minute. But me and Dana would just talk on regular shit, and it won't be nothing about fighting. But then it would be some internet shit, and like, oh, Dana said this and this and this. That don't bother me. Yeah, yeah. Dana just be, Dana just be talking. I, I think I fell out with Dana. When um, when I when I lost to Ryan Bader in Japan, you mm-hmm. know, I, I I got injured before that fight, and I and I called Dana right away. I said, "Man, I, I tore um, uh, uh, I got a partial tear in, in my meniscus." He said, "What you gonna do?" I said, "Shit, man, it's Japan. I still want to fight." I said, "But you Take know, that motherfucker out two week recovery." Yeah, I was like, "Fuck, it, I'm still going to fight. I I want to fight, man. I, I, you know, it's Japan. 
we was fighting in Japan. I love fighting Japan. So when I went there and I, and I fought and uh, I lost by decision, first thing Dana do in the press comes like, I don't know what's going on with Rampage. I don't think he has it. I don't think he wanted it anymore. And I was oh, like, man, I, that's when I, that's when, after all that shit Dana did to me, when he did that shit, that's when I got kind of got pissed at him. And like, yeah. I lost my love for fighting right there. He just, I was like, I was like, and cause I never pulled out of a, out of a fight. I don't yeah. pull out, man. I got, yeah, I got four, too, a, I got four, same. five, six kids. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, I'm on the same mm. thing. Yeah, yeah, I don't pull out. Mm -hmm. And I, I had never pulled out of a fight <laughs> in my career. I never saying, pulled I'm, out. I'm ahead of you on that. <laughs> and he, and then I, after that, when I got injured, I started pulling out of fights. I said, fuck this shit. Cause you don't get no respect. You fighting yeah. injured. And, and I let Dana know right away that I was injured. And for him to say that, this kind of like, it kind of yeah, made I, me look at him sideways. I had many of those. So you had one. I had many, many the same way you feel right now. I had the imagine you still burn a little bit, right? Yeah, right? yeah. You think like because you're a bitch ass nigga for doing that, like yeah. in real life. Yeah, because like in real life, you know, you know for real. That's a, see, that's a click. That's a headline. Sorry, but it's one. <laughs> right? You know good and well. I fucking told you, dog. Yeah. But now you are gonna sit here on. You know good and well. I told you I tore my labor ring as Damian Maya, and you just told everybody that nobody want to watch me fight. But she was just praise Paige Van Zandt. Bless her heart. That's my that's my dog. She fought a tough fight. She was courageous and she lost a fight when she lost with that arm. Remember, she was fighting um, yeah. Jessica Rose Clark, right? Yeah. But they saluted her on fighting injured. I tore my right labrum, my money making shot. What's the, on what's the a, first? What's, what's a labrum? Is right here. It's like, it's like you got a labrum right here in your uh, shoulder. Uh, okay. Next, like the delt and, they, and the also arm you have the same like, labrum in your hip, right? Yeah, okay. So it's rotational thing. I always thought the labrum was had something to do with a vagina. Labia. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> when you said that shit, I didn't want to say that. I'm like, this motherfucker talking about a nah, vagina. My guy over here studying the body. <laughs> nah, he did, he did <laughs> He's do it. Yeah. <laughs> no, he was. He was. He was <laughs> thinking about something. He was labor, and that's all. And that's all he wanted to hear. He always thinking about girls. Yeah, but he. He did that. He did that, and that's, he was like, that's not "Nobody want to watch him fight." Da da da. And I was like, I had kind of like barked a little bit. I said, "All right, you owe me a public apology, or I'm gonna start singing." You know what I'm talking about? So we wrapped it up. All right, did he give a public apology though? See, that's that's the thing. You know, I learned the hard way back when I was fighting in Pride. Right, Pride treated me like shit. Yeah, they they dogged me out. They treated me like shit. I see it right now. Like back back then, in, in the Pride contracts. We wasn't allowed to talk about how much money we made, yeah. Because we got paid cash money. I remember. And one time, Heath Heron, man, him used to be really close, man. He came to visit me one time in California. We hanging out, drinking and stuff. And he just he asked me, he was like, "How much you making?" I was like, "Man, you know I can't tell you that shit." He said, like, "Come on, man, you can tell me. It's just I ain't gonna I ain't gonna say shit." Nah, <laughs> I told him that sounded like a setup. <laughs> yeah, it was a setup. I told him I told him how much money I was making. He said, "Oh man, you getting fucked?" I'm like, "What you mean?" Yeah. I said, like, how much you make? He said, I can't tell you that. <laughs> yeah, he hit you. He yeah. hit you with Okie Dog. Yeah. yeah, but then that's what, but but you know he woke me up to uh because when I first when I first fought in Pride, I fought Soccer Robert on two weeks' notice, and they paid me ten thousand dollars. And and that was big money for me because I left everything back home to be a fighter, right? I was supposed to fight Ken Shamrock for five thousand dollars. And yeah. and they pulled me in from that fight and sent me. Yeah, I gotta inflate these. That, that's back in what? That's 2000, 2000, 2001. 2001? Yeah. Yeah. So back then, ten bands was like making a hundred bands. Now. You sure. Now it is not a hundred bands. Maybe like thirty. Maybe 30, like 30. 40. Yeah. Now it is. <laughs> yeah, but that was but that was the most money. You're sitting I ever across made. the person that know the numbers. Yeah. You don't want to hear it. But people are making money now. Yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. If you're, in there, kiss, if you're in there kissing uh, pinky rings and you, you walk out of there with a little Vaseline on your waistband, you making money. Bro, bro, they was making money then. When when I told, I don't give a fuck. I'll tell y'all. Yeah. When, I don't when, tell people your numbers. No, nah, I don't give a fuck. It's back Make then. them look it up. Oh, he keep nah, it they as can't, real they as They can't look at a pride. They can't look at a pride. Well, he keep it as real as But I don't give a fuck. I don't hey, give a fuck. Everybody business. My mama said everybody business ain't nobody business. You right. Yeah. You right. Your mama, your mama right though, but but on this G code thing today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, dead ass, because now you still fighting. So now yeah. when you go and ask somebody for an X, Y, Z, where you said on the podcast, you fought this, da, 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 nah, that, that 25 was, years ago. That was, yeah, that was yeah. 20 years ago. Man, I ain't fought for under a million dollars in fucking hey. in, in, in years. Say it. People don't understand say, that. Say it. People don't understand My that. My boy's getting paid now. We good. Yeah, we yeah, on a people, podcast. People, yeah, people, people don't understand. We got podcast money now. I, 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 people, I offer me money, people offer me money now because, you know, in UFC, they just see that 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 money that the, um the, the um what you call them, the, um, the referees, those... Uh, the, no, no, the the commission. They just see the commission check. Oh, yeah, I get they, they just yeah, see that. Yeah, they don't yeah. see, they don't see your full purse, right? Yeah. So they everybody think that you make whatever the commission get you. But back in Pride, them motherfuckers were making like two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars cash money. Yeah. They were paying me thirty thousand dollars, bro. And I was like the the biggest star 
from America besides like um, Kevin Randleman and yeah. Mark Mark Coleman and shit. And and he he Heron put me up on game. And I went and I, I went know back, he, yeah he are. yeah and I and I went and I went back. I told him I was like, oh man, y'all paying me nigga money? What the fuck? Yeah. And then <laughs> that guy even madder at me. They didn't put me in the first video game. All this shit happened, right? So I didn't I didn't feel no loyalty to them. So I kind of started talking. I started saying too much. I learned my lesson. I I'll never do it again. I talked about how when I fought Soccer Robert, how they offered me a thousand dollars more to take a dive. Yeah. And I was like, wow, I shouldn't, that's I good business because wow. now you now you. The, the wisdom came from it. Yeah. But well, you know not to talk. That's why I, I yeah. say everybody been Only nobody. one G for the dive. Yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> yeah, and that's why that's why Pride sit on fuck with me. Like when I went to Risen in Japan and I had to buy my own tickets. I was sitting I, I had to buy like five tickets. So I didn't know where the seats were. It was all in Japanese. So I get there and I was kinda like far from the ring and I'm posting. I don't care. I don't care about this yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And the fans were like, damn nigga, they said you in the nose, <laughs> please. Hey. Then I went to then I went then uh, yeah. Nate gave me tickets to uh, his fight. I'm sitting in front row, and they're like, "Oh, you got better seats." Yeah, like that. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And so the Jake they don't Paul fuck fight. With you were saying courtside. Yeah, I said, yeah. yeah. They don't uh, pride. They don't. They, they, they don't. They fuck didn't look me. that much better. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 everybody looked the best. Kid, he's not the best boxer in MMA. Who Nate? Nate was not the best boxer. No, no, but he did good. Though. I'm proud. I, of did, him, I didn't watch it. I mean, but I was going to watch it because they had me interested. Like that's what it's all about. For somebody that fought Jake and somebody that respect Nate. For me to want to pay my money and watch it, had I just been so sleepy, I would have watched that mug. So you would have got my money, right? Yeah, yeah. That's If you can do that, you're a draw. He's forever going to be a draw. Yeah, they, so how did the fight go? It, it, was, it, was, it was a very entertaining fight, in my opinion. I watch it as entertainment. You know I'm going for Nate. Nate, my, yeah. Nate always been one of the realest OGs. Yeah, I'm I, going I for him. Nate. But he just he just didn't he just didn't look like himself. And then I went in his locker room later. He I don't know if he said this in the press, but he was injured. He had he had a pull of muscle. In I mean, his a back. lot of people don't say it. Remember, no, he ain't gonna say you it. Yeah, yeah. You walk in, and that's respect. Yeah. And I can tell something. I said, "Man, what's wrong with you?" Because his one of his pecs was smaller than other. He said, "Oh man, I got I fucked up. I got a pinched nerve in my back." And I was like, "Oh okay." That dude ain't never talking. He ain't no. never giving an excuse. No. He a real one. No, no. I I respect that because I got excuse for all of my losses. <laughs> Every last one of them. But you know, so you can't you can't you lose respect when you talk about your excuses. Though. Yeah. But I do got excuse for all my losses. See, <laughs> every last one of them. Every, I go through all. I got excuse uh, for all my. But will you watch the um the um Francis and Tyson? Uh, I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'll yeah. be out there. You're, You're gonna, gonna go to the there. fight. Yeah. Mm. I was I was thinking about maybe fighting on that card, but I don't. The little opponent they had set up for me, just talking about fighting, but he didn't really want to fight. Mm. Who who's this? I don't want to say oh, it because say, okay. I don't. I'll, I'll tell you afterwards, but I don't want to give him no clout. Oh, okay. Because right. if he's going to do the fight, then let's You're do it. You're all about his business. But if he don't do the fight, I wish I would give you a yeah. name yeah. on y'all platform. Well, that, yeah, that's in, that's in October, right? October. Yeah, they, they were talking about flying me out there. Yeah. Where is but, it? Dubai? Saudi Arabia? Uh, Saudi, Saudi, what? Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Yeah. Fran Francis or Fury? Who wins that? Still Fury. Fury. Yeah, Fury. Yeah, but I, Francis being trained by Mike Tyson now. Listen. Listen, I, I want I want Francis. I want Francis to win. I think Francis has a bunch of chance. You know what's to eat? The... This this off the radar. Yeah, you know what the really the most even fight I think in heavyweight boxing for Francis. What? Deontay Wilder. Why you say that? I think him and Francis are pretty fucking even. I think that's a tough fight for him as well yeah. too. Because I think it's a tough fight <laughs> for him. Wilder, one of the best. When ever. you look at when you look at, I get he's one of the best knockout artists. But you look at the most recent thing has been what? All his coaches have been tack, um, tackling on his fundamentals and his basics, right? So that means he has power, but Enough coaches, two or three in a row, have all voiced that they want to work on his basics. Am I wrong? Right, right. So how is he that much further along than Francis? They both got a killer mm, punch. No, it's not just because his 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 yeah. height, his reach, and he knows how to use that. And thirty plus fights. Hey undefeated. Siri, hey Siri, what's the reach on? Um, yeah, Deontay Wilder. What's the reach on? I think it's no, I think I think no. Deontay Wilder is a skilled okay, professional so, who so was thirty plus fights. Yeah, he won thirty plus fights. It was undefeated, almost forty, and comparative to Tyson. I think he has a better chance to beat Deontay Wilder than Tyson. Yeah, yeah. Maybe okay, chance, I agree. I agree with that. Chance, I agree with that. Same. I'm gonna tell you who who he will match up good with Anthony Joshua. Oh yeah, Francis oh, yeah. and Anthony oh, yeah. Joshua. Because Anthony's trying to be cute. Yeah. Wait, what he's do you trying mean? to be a pretty boy. He what do you mean? He he um he's a very he's like the perfect how how do I say this? I used to play the fight mirror the fight in basketball game. Oh like yeah. Football. yeah. Not fight. Um, sorry. Well, the um, boxing game. Boxing game. Jermaine Taylor, right on the game. He was a perfect boxer, right? But if you fought somebody that was kind of rough and kind of legal, right, on the video game at least, right, <laughs> towards the end of the round, you can find a way to beat him. But outside of that, he was a perfect boxer. 
I think Joshua, oh shit, if if he get hit with some shit by Francis, yeah. he might buckle a little bit. And then all the years and all the record and all the reach, all that shit down the drain. When you got a big motherfucker in front of you swinging with everything he got. Because Anthony Joshua, he will quit. Remember when he fought Anthony Ruiz? Yeah. Andy. I like Ruiz. I like Ruiz. Andy, 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 Ruiz. Like hey, Andy Ruiz is nasty. I like I yeah, Andy. Andy, Andy, Andy Ruiz. Yeah, yeah, he's nasty. Yeah, yeah. Anthony I, and Andy. Yeah. It's, it's, it's both, just right? Anthony or yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think I think Anthony Joshua is obviously, you know, skilled. Deontay Wilder, very skilled. One of the best ever in the heavyweight division. Tyson Fury, probably the best I just like, he time. like the people champ. He, you know, he rolled with the punches really well. He got a little sauce. Who? And then, um, Who, Fury? Tyson Fury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. He's just... um. He's smarter than what he gives credit for because he gets so close to your level. He like, um, he makes you feel like he like your, your your brother. You don't feel like if you see him in public, he will say no to a picture, right? Right. But he really playing you. You think so? Watch him. Yeah, he's nasty. He's he nasty. making people miss. That dude is, he, he got an IQ. For a big dude, he's athletic, but he also has this fluidness to his body, right? Like the way he moves and the way he takes punches. Do you see that Undertaker where he got knocked out and then he just yeah. pops up out of nowhere? Bro, come that's, on. That's, that's, that, that, that changed me. That's when I became more of a fan of his. Then he came back and beat Wilder because I, I, I liked Wilder. I was a big fan of Wilder. I like Wilder, Wilder too. I was a big fan of him. Yeah, I still like him, but I was kind of upset with him when he lost the second match. And he said it was because of his walkout gear. I was like, man. Oh, he had that heavy ass oh, gear. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, why are you going to wear some heavy ass? Came out like a ninja. It, it's just embarrassment. Mixed with the night. It's knife. just embarrassment when you got like, you know, in your mind, you feel like you walk out with something that confident and you're going to win. And then you walk out there and then you lose. It's just that everybody expecting you to win. And when you lose, your your identity is wrapped so much into winning as a champion that when you lose, it's like, I remember I lost the title. I may, I may have flew back on economy. I may have flew their business. Are you serious? You flew back so. economy? I think so. Why? <laughs> they could. <laughs> See, this is where I catch myself. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's Wait. Mm-hmm. So, 2019, you lose the belt to Usman, right? I didn't lose no belt to Usman. Usman won his belt. He can never see me. You know that. What's that mean? That means he won his belt. He can never beat me and take my belt. Usman can never see me. He was a, I mentored Usman. Like they were like fans of mine. Okay. Him, Kobe. Okay. At the time when he fought me, he fought me when unfortunately the seeds that you plant got to grow. Yeah. I was thinking that I was on this reign. I didn't lose a round in years and I had everything mastered, but I wasn't living right. So I was planting those flesh seeds into the ground. Those seeds had to harvest. He he came and saw me at that time. He couldn't even he couldn't even beat me at my warm up rate. You know what I mean? Like we we me and Rashad pranked him. A lot of people don't know this. We was working at Fox. He said, "Man, let's let's call Usman. Let's prank him." Right? It was like, "Hey yo, hey Usman, um, oh, um, oh. I shouldn't even tell him this, but I'm gonna tell anyone." Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "Hey, hey yo, Usman, um, um, Danny just called me, man. He said, um." Uh, what's the name out of the fight, man? They, they need a replacement to fight Woodley, man. You, know, you said you can beat him. You you, you think you, you, you ready to jump? And they said, uh, they, they, they need me now. Like, now? Like, uh, I'm not like, what's the He was like, hey. But then we hear the phone. He's like, I was just fuck with you. I said, oh, Usman, I, I thought we was done. Because he was like at my after parties and asking me, how does it feel when Dana wiped the, put the bet around you? I said, I said, you'll see. You'll be a champion. You'll see what it feel like. It feel different to everybody, right? Mm. I never thought it was going to be against me. Mm. I was just out of my mind at that point. I was living a crazy life. I was living two lives. I had a girlfriend. I had a wife. I was going through a divorce. <laughs> I was I was all at the same time. I had injuries I after injuries, and I had so much stuff that I couldn't even really even touch. The fighting wasn't even the most important thing, and my whole mission was to prove everybody wrong. Because mm-hmm. type in worst treated champion in the UFC, I'm going to pop up, number one. So I had always, oh, you think Till can beat me? Let me show you. Oh, you think Maya can beat me because he's a wrestler? Let me show you. You think Dung Young Kim can beat me because I back up a lot and he does well moving forward? Let me show you. So when that became not enough anymore to show a motherfucker over and over again, it became not enough anymore, if that makes sense. Like, I don't like fighting in on damn Apex Arena. I fought in the Madison Square Garden. Yeah. The number one gate that they've ever had. The number one fight that they ever had with me and Wonder Boy. Fight of the night on the best car the UFC has ever had. Am I lying? 
Right. Connor fought on that card against Eddie. I fought. Yawan mm-hmm. and Young Jake Shack fought. First time they put three belts up on the line. Boom, boom, boom. Me and Wonder Boy had a crazy fight. That was, that was the first fight. time they went to. Um, that was the first yeah. time UFC had UFC. fought in New yeah. York. Yeah, yeah. It was illegal. Yeah. Yeah. The garden was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. We got the biggest gate to date. I, I, I remember FaceTiming you like two days later. I was yeah. like, bro, I cannot believe that. And it was like the biggest fight, three belts. Woodley goes in there, does his thing. McGregor, yeah. I was like, "Wow, dude, you did it! Like, congrats!" But and you, you were don't so want, and you don't want to fight in the Apex Arena after that. Yeah, no, no, I just no. feel weird. Yeah. Feel like a, it didn't feel like a real fight. It's, it feel like, like you're fighting in the Ultimate Fighter echo. show. Yeah, it's you, the you echo know, yeah, all this shit. bullshit. Yeah. He, like at it. that time, though, Woodley, I mean, a lot of people, I don't think, give you enough credit. He was so humble, so respectful. You promoted, you know, and helped the sport. You also did a lot outside of the sport. You did a lot for me personally and my businesses and things. Like, you're always a stand-up guy. Right now, you have this edge to you. I could feel like you're starting to come back. I could feel that fight in you, that dog in you is back. I know it never left, but maybe yeah. I didn't see it as much, and it's, I feel it right now. It's just um my my um my perspective is a little bit more. Like, I'm, I'm living life, like, retrospective to the point where I see mistakes, but I can't spend too much time on it because... I can identify what went wrong, but I can't take that knowledge back and change it, right? So just acknowledge it so you don't make that same mistake moving forward. Mm. Also, being real about where I'm at right now, right? Some people have offered me some money for fights in the past. I've been like, uh, no. Nah. But I'm still with you. My figure's got to be above seven. Mm. I can't move down for that, mm. right? But the digits after that, I got to be a little bit more humble because I have had some lessons, right? But I got to stand my ground. So I'm finding that medium. And I'm also looking at the big picture. Just because I have some detours, that don't fall for me from the finish line. Right? So now I got to have focus on retrospectively seeing what I did wrong, try not to make the same mistakes. It's just wise anybody to do, right? Evaluate where I'm at right now from a real standpoint. Like I may just got to look at this. You may need to take off the table. This you need to put more. You need to put more time in this. You've been doing this for your equalizers a lit on this category because you spent like 10 years in it, right? So finish that with a bang. These things, that they're going to be there, right? But the dials aren't up on those yet, right? Eventually, you want all the dials up. Equalize on blast, right? So I had to kind of evaluate that part and then look at the big picture. What does my big picture look like? It ain't yours, right? And that's cool. What God got for me, you can't never stop. You can't never tell. I had to tell Usman that. You ever see that picture of me and Usman sitting next to each other? He got on like a little floral looking suit and I got on like just some regular Jordan shit. Mm-hmm. So we sitting there, everybody, oh, that's such a... But do y'all know what I was telling this dude? What you were telling? You can't never take what's mine, dog. And you know that wasn't me fighting in there. I'm coming to get that belt. He said, I, he said, I want to fight the best version of you. And I respect Usman because he said that. He said, yeah, I want to fight the best version of you. You know, something was off and I can tell, right? And then he was telling me about wanting to be with some of the same endorsers I have and do some of the on-air stuff. I said, go do that. You got to do as much as you can. Because if you don't, that window going to close quick. So don't be mad. at. Don't feel like you're hurting me. You won your belt. You never took my shit. Right? I lost my belt. You didn't take it. You can never take it. I'm I told him that to I'm going to tell Forrest Griffin that shit. He I'm going to call Forrest Griffin. Him. He can I'm never take your shit. belt. You had 100%. Forrest, Forrest Griffin was wishing on the star. Mm. I don't feel like I lost that fight anyway. Mm. I, feel like the, I feel like the judges gave him that fight. Forrest Griffin embodies what we've been conditioned to think MMA is from the first time the Ultimate Fighter show. You almost kill me. I almost kill you. You bleed. Now I'm bleeding. Now I barely can stand up. You barely can stand up. We hug at the fucking end. That's the, that's the, that's the fight of the night. Now, the fight of the night is when you swing, you miss, and I make you pay. Well, I'm better than you. And I'll, I'll brawl the brawler. I'll outstrike the striker. I'll outsport fight the karate fighter. That's the best fight. Yeah. Because I went into your world and I beat you in your own shit. That's what I got. That's what I got to rise out of, right? Oh, uh, Robbie the Boogeyman. Let me show you right quick. Who, Robbie Lawler? Mm. That's what they was. The whole trailer. Ooh, the boogeyman. He's like scary. Uh, the boogeyman. The boogeyman. Like it was like, it was like oh. I was nervous for you. Tired and good. Don't be nervous for me. God got me. I'm covered with blood. Yeah. I was Never nervous a little bit. I texted me. you. I said, yo, hit your cardio right. Yeah. You said, don't worry about me. I said, all right, I'm not going to text him the rest of the camera. Because, <laughs> like, look at your logo, right? Yeah. Fear's fear a is a liar. Don't inject other fear into people that I don't never have. That's it. So, out of respect, I answered it because it's my dog. But if it wasn't, he would have been put on silence because he's not on the same spirit wavelength. Right, somebody on the spirit wavelength would never try young. to inject fear young. into my mind. I was young. All right, don't tell me to watch out for this. Mm-hmm. That's what my counselor calls the red balloon. If I say rampage, don't look at that red balloon. What you gonna look at? You gonna look at? You gonna so look at why do balloon. I need to put fear into your heart when I all the 
at the end of the day, I got to give you a technical instruction, right? Mm-hmm. So if a dude got a big overhand right, he's going to tell you lift what hand up? The uh, left hand. So why wouldn't he just tell you lift your left hand up? That's what he's going to tell you anyway. You may not have been scared of the, the overhand right. Why would you put fear? It's already enough at stake. We got to make weight. It's if we win, we go to the next level. It's um, next implications. We can't not think about that when we go out there, right? Yeah. What happens in victory? So much happens in victory. Keep this pay-per-view thing going, right? Got another opportunity here, right? Now I can get in the movie because of this, right? It's so much attached to the victory. Our Super Bowl is every time we walk out. We don't get 12 games, we don't get 50 baseball games. We don't get 100 baseball games or 50 basketball games. We get one to three at most, and that's cooking yeah. a year. Every time we walk out, it's the Super Bowl, right? Yeah, he's 100% right. I, I, had to, um, I had to silence my parents before my fights because I understand that people don't know what to say to a fighter, you know what I'm saying, right no before clue. we go to fight. They, they, don't, they don't have a clue, you know. They say, are you ready? They say, all this stuff. How you don't, don't get knocked out. I'm like, and you know, it pisses you <laughs> out. And you don't want to... You don't wanna you don't wanna cuss your parents out though. When they yeah. say, you know, my dad, he crazy, he be saying some yeah, of the most yeah. fucked up shit. And I'm like, Dad, I had to teach him. I'm like, look here, Pops, you can't say you can't say certain things for to a fighter r- right before they fight. And and yeah. and especially like a lot of people don't understand right before you fight, your mind is like a, a sponge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you just can't, you just can't, you gotta be careful. A lot of people that, don't understand. Hey, it. that's a good game for me, because that yeah. makes sense. Mm-hmm. Because I never thought about that. Cause it's just like it's almost like you fasting, right? Yeah. You fasting. Sound like you fasting your spirit and your mind. You're not eating what you want to eat. You're not doing what you want to do. You you basically stopping anything that's that's of luxury until you get this win. So you fasting. Yeah. Pretty much. So your spirit is sensitive. Yeah. Your body weak, right? right? So information coming in you really don't want. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, your your brain your mind's yeah. like a sponge. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. I, I told I told you know what I told my mom. That's why me and her got a dope relationship. Me and Mama Wood. Um, uh, I said, Mom, I feel like shit. But I can't remember the last time I didn't feel like this. And I ain't never miss weight. And I said, I, I appreciate you, but I already know I got this burden of making the weight. And you asking me about it means you're worried about it. That's not helping me make the weight. There's nothing you can do from a nutritional standpoint. You can't run it for me. You can't lose it for me. The best thing you can do for me is pray for me. Pray for my mind. Pray for my body. Pray that it get off. Pray that, you know what I mean? I'm staying focused fight for me in the spirit. Then my, my family know how to war for me in the spirit. So they pray for the things that I can't see because I am sensitive, right? Mm-hmm. They pray for my healing. They pray for my recovery. They pray for my mind. They pray for, you know, every distraction that can come, they want to stomp the brakes on it, right? So that's kind of what I would tell people. You know what I mean? Just pray for me mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, what's going to happen is going to happen. You know what I mean? Yeah, 100. I've always been, since the, since the day I met you, for you know, years ago, I was a young kid, always been a one, always has been someone who was like straight and narrow and respectable and kind of like was like a, 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 a not a mentor, but this guy who you knew would give you the right game. And that's yeah. why I always had so much respect for you, because you always shot me straight. You always kept it real, always kept it 100. But one thing about you is that you're always a competitor. Yeah. Like so for as long as I've known him, always a competitor, always focus on his fitness, his nutrition, his training. You know, I know there's a lot of back history with wrestling, but like for like a guy like Usman, if you're looking at the UFC in today, can a guy like Usman get his belt back or is that window closed? I mean, in my opinion is I feel like everybody, like we said earlier, they want to see somebody else get hurt for them. Like, oh, Everybody, how did you feel when Leon Edwards knocked him out? You think I'm cheering because Usman got knocked out? His daughter was there and watched that. You know how that felt to her? She felt like her dad was dead. Yeah. Me, him getting knocked out don't give me my belt back. He never took it. My my choices I made, the distractions I entertained, and my focal point was not what I originally said it was going to be. Get the victory, give God the glory. That was what I came in on, right? Then I started giving myself the glory. Then I started, like, basking in it. You know, it was it was a time period when everybody was like, I was like the public enemy. A whole cover. Look it up. Public enemy of the UFC. It was me. Madison Square. I was like, fuck everybody. I was Tupac. I didn't care. I was quiet. You never heard the stories. But I've been in people's face of the brass about to whip, whip their ass in offices. Tops to the tops to the tops. Because you're not going to disrespect me as a man. Like right now you're telling me as a man I'm disrespecting you and I'm going to treat somebody else better than you. So it got to a point where I had to <sighs> chill out. It, it's a time and a place for everything. And if I can go back and do things differently, I would understand the game earlier and play it. Yeah. yeah. And play the game, bro. You gonna, you, 
win as much as you can at the top of the ladder as you can make as many millions as you can get somebody with you on financial literacy and investments and because you're gonna make a lot of money quick and nobody tell you how to keep it most of us come in broke right that's what i would go into it just focusing on like steph curry lebron james all these athletes you see they're not better athletes than us in our sport Right, you can't tell me that LeBron James is a more powerful figure than you at two or five. Can you tell me it's different? It may be times where you may have lost your focus. It may be times where I lost my focus. Had we not, nothing would have stopped us. Right, they're not undefeated. Yeah, they're not. But but when you look, like I talked to my dog Ray Lewis, he said, "Tyron, I got your back." He said. I lost times, I lost focus this many times in my career. I can count them on one hand as far as his regiment, his mind, what females or what everything, what that sat at on the priority list, he never lost track of. A few times, he said, I can count on my hand the times it did. And he said, those times, it almost cost me everything, right? Now, I can know I got more than this. I got more than five. Man, don't beat yourself up about it because I'm not because good. that's part of being human and being a, um, a a professional athlete. And you know our background, where we come from. You know we don't even we don't we're not psychic. We don't know the future. We we didn't know that we was going to do this or make this accomplishments. And we we're like we're 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 living the hype. We're loving it. Then we get surrounded like you. You started rapping, making music, yeah. and you you hanging around like I still make music. I don't let people. Let me not make music either. I got a lot of music I got to try. There's nothing wrong with that. But, yeah. but people are telling me not to do this. Focus on this and only do this and don't do this and this and this. That just made me want to do it more. But you can't. <laughs> but but the way the focus works, you can spread your 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 focus too thin. Yeah. You can do that, but ain't nothing wrong with making music. Like especially yeah. like on after a fight, you get done fighting. All yeah. right, I'm gonna go to the studio for yeah. for a little while and stuff like that. I, I'm, I'm even take- during the fight camp because think about it. People be um. Playing mad video games. Yeah, I you do, do that. too. Twitching yeah. like a month. Yeah. How are you gonna tell me if I want to spend an hour and a half, two hours in the studio? You want to spend it on Twitch? Ain't nothing How wrong with that. we different. Yeah, yeah. Hey. I just choose to do some different art. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I feel like at the end of the day, I'm an artist. I'm not just a fighter. Mixed martial arts is just one form of art that you knew me from first. So what people know you from first, they want to see you do more of that than anything, right? Yeah. It gets your mind yeah. off the fight as well, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. You don't want to be focused on a, on a fight all the time. You, you you burn your mind out, I feel, my in my God, opinion. I agree. I agree. 100%. If I, but I'm going to tell you, uh, when I first when I first uh, remember meeting him, maybe I met him at, at, at fights and stuff before, but uh, one time I had to go to St. Louis. That's where you were living. Yeah. And, and, and he let me train in his gym. And he was a realist motherfucker. I think this is the first time like we like really like met and hung out. He man, it was like Southern hospitality, bro. Like no one has ever made me let me feel so comfortable at that gym. Did I fight? That was I fighting there or something? I don't know why. I, I think was he was fighting there. Uh, in Saint yeah, Louis. he was fighting in St. Louis. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I feel like when people come to my city, I take pride in that, and I want to make sure they set. I want to make sure they solid. And um, nobody was gonna fuck with you either. You ain't know about that, but mm-hmm. my dudes, my guys watched over you. Make oh, sure you was good. St. Louis, a rough city. Man, I, yeah, I didn't so. even know. I, I felt. Yeah. You I don't supposed good. to know that. Yeah, I felt <laughs> good, man. Yeah. I felt good there. You ain't supposed to know that, uh, bro. He 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 really he really uh, made me feel special yeah. at his gym. No one's ever done it for me at that gym. They just said, "Come, oh yeah, you can use my gym. You don't got to pay or nothing yeah. like that." They, they did, but he was like, "Oh, anything you need, this took care of everything." A one. It was a yeah, one. You a legend. He always been like that. You a legend, and people got to People give you respect, and I appreciate that because some people don't get it. And um, not that that's what you do it for, but you did a lot in the game, and you become, I would say, one of the first five actual characters in the mm-hmm. sport. Yeah. You know what I mean, I I it wasn't that. a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody was like, "Oh, they didn't know how to do interviews, like looking weird," and and you really made it fun to watch you. And um, you people from like similar backgrounds like me, like it made me want to rise up. So I appreciate what you did for me. Oh, and Robert, no. oh sure. man, shit. <laughs> that's, that's what's now, you, in, you inspired a whole generation oh, of fighters. Sure. I, I don't, you know, it's the weirdest thing, man. I, I never really thought about that part. I just like entertaining people yeah. and, you know, I like fighting and, and I, I felt like, you know, I just have to be myself and either people going to like me or people going to hate me. That's, that's yeah. so crazy. It's hard for people to do that. Just be themselves. They want to be what they think it's going to take to be to get the money. I mean, if it to, ain't you, then successful. your money's meant to be made somewhere else. I think John Jones made made that mistake. I think he came to the sport. Oh he was kind of he's kind of like he was kind of faking a little bit, faking a religion, good good boy role a little bit too much. I'm gonna tell you this: when John Jones first got that first scandal, when he got caught um, 
doing drugs or whatever he did. I can't remember. I said, you know what? I ain't mad at John Jones, but if you walk out to that song, I'm in love with the Coco, <laughs> I'm going to be his biggest hey, fan. Hey, shout out to my dog, OT. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I love that song. I said, if John Jones walk out to his, because he had a fight coming up after yeah. that. He got caught doing a bunch of Coco shit. Uh, OT I, Genesis. Yeah. I oh, said, bro, God. own it. Come out to that song. I'm in love with the Coco. Please, John, please. <laughs> I would have fell out if he, did, he didn't funny. do it. I was like, Damn. I like OT. OT only do hits. Yeah, I, I did. A he only do OT. bangers. Oh, I man. did a um, song that like "Let's Go Big" with OT. He walked me out to the fight to it, but he he. I think he may be doing an album now. I don't know if he is. Yeah, but he ain't never did an album. He you never know? did an album? every every song. He got plaqued. Man, that's a cold. That's a cold. Yeah, he, he got he got five five to seven smashes that you may not even know he sung. Mm. Uh, push it, go get the money, go get oh, the money. Oh, yeah. I'm in love that's with the Coco. Uh, yeah. I look real good today. So he'll, yeah. he'll come up in your, he got a song with Dolph that's hard too. Um, yeah. So he just, he only makes hits. That's why yeah, he's, he's banging. He hey, can but, train too. You ever train one? No, man. No, you should train one. He can train. Oh, for real? Yeah, he's an athlete. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. T, what do you think of the current uh, UFC welterweight division? Uh, It's just, it's just grew. The, the, the prospects are now the, the guys and it's, Unfortunate that the UFC feels a little corny now because there's no real authentic characters. Everybody's trying to be with their, everybody wearing. You don't even look right in that suit. Take it off. You Man. you better off in some vans and some like, be yourself. So I feel like Leon Edwards is always a tough fighter, and he just became eligible. If, I, if that mm -hmm. makes sense, he became eligible to fight for a title shot, and he was always a good fighter. But as far as like a brand. Like, the UFC welterweight division ain't been lit since I left it. Think about when I was a champion. I did whatever I wanted to. Nobody can tell me not to do this, not to do that. I beat Darren Till ass. I dropped a song called I Beat Your Ass in the, in the cage with Wiz Khalifa on Wiz's birthday oh, after yeah. I beat the dude ass. Nobody was doing stuff like that. I was a, I was doing more movies than anybody, more production stuff, more outside UFC stuff. I really didn't fuck with nobody in the UFC when I left. When I fought, that was it. I didn't communicate. I didn't talk really, to be honest. Masvidal and Mike Perry were the only two guys I really communicated with because I can relate to them. I knew yeah. them personally. Yeah. I knew it was real. Like Masvidal threw a little extra little whipped cream on it towards the end to get the extra bread. But he's just been kind of a soft-spoken person that's been thinking that the whole time. You yeah. know what I mean? Perry has found his perfect lane for him. Yeah. He is in the perfect lane. Yeah, and, yeah I, I fuck with Perry. What yeah. about Co Covington and Edwards? How do you see that going? They fight? No, if they were to. I mean, Covington going to take him down and just stay close to him. That's it? Easy? Yeah, he's going to need a plan B for his leg, but after he, that. He has enough to finish it, though? I mean... I feel like Leon never had a hard time stopping Usman, and Usman was still trying to strike with him. He was just um, he Usman fought him really well the first time. Mm -hmm. If you go back and look at it, he fought him really well because he the second he started losing the striking battle, he didn't just dive in. He threw something towards the head to get him to cover, and then he went for the shot. His reach shots was um, on point, and he knew how important it was to burn the clock and discourage him by taking him down. He did that the whole fight. Um, I think Kobe won't set it up based upon, okay, you're getting the upper hand and striking. Let me throw a punch and then go in. Kobe's going to do that from the beginning to the end. He'll say whatever he want to say, right? Mm -hmm. But he is going to try to take him down, and he can do it cardio-wise the whole five rounds, and that's what the fight's going to be. What is he going to do? Knock Leon out, hit him with some shit. No, he gonna take him down. So you can't make up yeah. that. You can't make up the level of wrestling in a training camp, or really even six months. It takes a long time to 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 get yourself disciplined to stop the shots. What What is it gonna take for you to get back to the UFC and and, and bring more excitement back? Because you just reminded me when you when you said that. You know, I don't really like watching it no more because everybody wearing the same shit. They yeah, ain't nobody yeah. exciting. You know, I will come. I will come back for Israel. Cause, cause I take personal. He, how do I say this? I take personal that he took personal. I wanted to fight him. I saluted you when I was a champ. I ain't have to get. I can do what some people do. I, who is the next? Ain't nobody next. It's just me. No, I gave you my platform. I said, hey, I think this little kid. I think he got it going on. I think he's gonna be the next up. So when I say I want to fight you, of course I want to fight you. You got the belt. I want to before anybody was double belting. I was asking to fight for the next division. He's still a champ right now, Israel. Yeah, he yeah he beat dude that beat him. Yeah, oh, he, yeah. He's he got, got he beat Alex. 
Got the oh, belt. that's right. That's right. That's and now right, he's that's about right. to fight Strickland this but week. But even though Alex yeah. beat him twice, right? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, kickbox, uh, Alex beat him yeah. in kickbox. Hey, a lot he was going on there. I think I I think the first fight he the first fight when when Alex knocked him out, I thought he he was finna beat him, but the referee what what was it what was it the um, bell ring or something? Because he knocked him out the same way he rocked him the the first fight. Yeah. You, oh, you mean the second fight? You think yeah. he was getting close? The second fight. Oh yeah, he was yeah. he was getting close, huh? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. How many times have the, they fought in the UFC? They fought twice. twice. The, the first the, time he finished him against the cage. The second right. time it looked like he was gonna finish him, mm-hmm. and then he just came the, hell the cage. But the same way he knocked him out when they fought the second time, he had he had he had rocked him right before. But I think the, what was the bell ring? Oh, you mean Israel rock dude? Yeah. Yeah. Israel rock dude. Yeah, I yeah. mean. You can't get the three pointer during halftime. You know what I mean, in basketball, <laughs> you got to do it within regulation. Yeah. He yeah. can't almost. A, you can tell he a coach. You can't he got a slogan a, for everything. Yeah, <laughs> hey, you, gotta, you gotta. You should be a full time coach too. <laughs> Are you coaching anybody right now? Um, I've been thinking. I got a gym in St. Louis. Said the same one. AT&T, yeah, same one. But it's just been, when you came there, my gym wasn't open to the public. Oh. It's just open just for me. Oh. So when that's the a pan- big ass gym. I know, and I'm open back up because the pandemic hit. And I didn't want nobody in there giving me COVID because then I couldn't fight and make money. So mm. I had to just kind of weigh out the options. So now I'm thinking about opening it back up and then um, I'll be coaching. But I, I don't want to coach a whole team. I want to have like the pros come in from all the different camps in St. Louis and we come on a Sunday, right? We see what motherfuckers did in the UFC. They calf kicking now. Are right, they, they calf kicking now. How are we going to stop it? It's a problem. It's a real problem in MMA. It's I hate shit that hard. shit. I it hurts so shit. bad, and it's hard to stop. Like, I did a training camp getting ready for um, Henry Hoof's camp, and I injured myself before the fight trying to take this calf kick shit, right? If somebody's doing, you know, something from the clinch, let's work. Let's talk through it, right? Everybody's smart. We all we all can see shit. Let's talk through it. Let's make up a solution for it, and that's lightly sparred, right? Now you don't have the edge of Monday being such the hardest practice, right? Mm-hmm. So we come in, we move around a little bit, we iron sharpen iron. If we do that every weekend after every fight, boxing, MMA, or whatever, kickboxing, we're going to constantly stay ahead of the curve. So my like when you go to my gym, ATT, training ahead of the curve. Mm-hmm. I would want to train on that level because – Fighters ain't loyal. I ain't finna spend all yeah. this time into a fighter and then he just go to the first person that's speaking fast and got this other guy on roster and he think he gonna get all the bells on what's this guy. They gonna leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? What do you think about Aljo and uh, Sean that fight? Al, you know, Aljo I, I talked to Aljo. Um, he got hit with a shot. Dude was backing up. Mm-hmm. Who don't pursue forward when somebody backing up? You know what I mean? You can, you can go hindsight any way you can, but... I just told him I fuck with his brand. He started to create his own brand, right? He was looking nice at his mm-hmm. uh, shirt open, had his haircut, has look, you know what I mean? And he came out there, it was his deal. He had his own brand, and, and I just appreciate him being okay with being him. And I told him, now don't call up on a rock because you lost a little homie, right? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I don't like when people just be quick to be like, oh, man, you a better guy this night, and you won, and da-da-da. He's pushing him to go fight somebody else, Marib or somebody else. Like who was that? No, I don't. I don't think Marab would ever fight Aljo. I think that was his no, best no, no. friend. That was no, the whole thing. he's pushing for Marab to oh. fight. Oh yeah, Sean. yeah, 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 yeah. Motherfucker, push for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Aljo, yeah. if you watch this, hope you do push for your fucking self. I think Aljo. Aljo can beat, I think Aljo, if he had the right training camp, yeah. right, game, yeah, right, he, can, he can beat him. But but think about this though. That what's that guy named Sugar? Yeah, Sugar Sean. He he's he's uh more more marketable. Yeah, I mean Dana. He, that's he like, is, that's, bro. That's Dana's so favorite guy right now. We say. Based upon what we say is marketable. Right. He's unapologetic. He can smoke whenever he wants to. He's knocking people off. He's calling stuff. He's doing throws, right? But Chico ran him. Who? Cheeto. Cheeto beat him. Cheeto. And that was his I only loss. Him. That was his only loss. But I don't think I don't think Sean Sean calls it the sugar Sean. Sean's just trying to get underneath his skin because he's smart. He's nasty. smart trying to get underneath his skin. But it don't matter because yeah. Cheetah's going to fight you the same way. Yeah, Cheetah's He's nasty. a dog. Yeah, he, no don't wanna, he don't want to fight. He don't want to yeah. fight that guy. Well, no, he has to fight him. I know, but I don't think he want to fight. I think he just did yeah. that to save face. No, They're they going to fight. Che- Cheetah's nasty. Cheetah on any given day could be a world champion, yeah. and he just needs a proper fight. I think. I mean, he beat the dude that's a world champion. Yeah. There's nothing on any yeah. given day. They need to set a date. If they set a date, then he... But, but, but I feel like... Aljo was saying instead of that fight happening, because that's what people are talking about, that's who Sean called out, right? They're gonna give him that fight, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and then Aljo saying, if you don't um he said, what did he say? I just read this post. He said, I won this. Remember I talked yeah. accolades. 
I defend it this time, either run it back with me or fight this other guy. Murab, his best friend, yeah. yeah no, no, but no, I don't man. think he would ever fight his best friend. That was the whole no, thing. No, 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 no. He yeah. was saying that um, Sugar, um, Sean, either rematch fight me or, or fight my yeah. friend. Yeah, so, no. so what if his friend wins win. the belt? Now you're yeah. never going to... But that's the thing. He'll never fight his friend. His friend will never fight him. I don't think... I think they have like a, a loyalty thing there. So why are you no, trying that, to get him to win the belt? what you're saying is what me and him yeah. saying. Yeah. Yeah. You're never going to get the belt back yeah. if your dog is yeah. in the spot. I, you I think fight that's his whole thing. I think that's his whole thing. Is like he wants to see his boy get a belt now because he already had it. So we'll see. I don't know. Yeah. Dana, Dana did a whole video about that. I think Aljo's going to be. On I was the show happy soon. when Robbie. Uh, we'll ask him. We'll I was happy when himself. Robbie won this belt. He won a first title for American Top Team. It was my dog. I was happy to see him win. But when I fought him, I was not happy to see him win. I was not going to see him win. Yeah. Right. So you got to you got to draw the. You don't get that many chances. The UFC likes that. They like team versus teammate. They do they like, like that. that. Shit. Well, I was it's the first one to do it. To be honest, think who, about it. Who, against Robbie. Robbie, Robbie Long. Nobody else fought their teammate. Kane would never fight um, um, Daniel, right? All these guys wouldn't fight each other. That was real teammates and shit. For yeah. the title, I had to do it. I think I think people want to see you fight Anderson Silva. I've been seeing this all over Anderson, the internet. Yeah, I don't be on the internet that much, but yeah, uh, I've been seeing it all over the internet. People want to see you fight Anderson Silva. They're saying that he signed a deal with Misfits and boxing, and they want to see you and him go boxing. Round Misfits, for, Misfits. That's KSI. Got, I know who it thing. is. Yeah, I know exactly. They paying good. They they, they, they they gotta do misfits, ma'ams. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all gotta do right by me first. But I'm a businessman. I you make it right, but it's double for your trouble this time around. First time around, I didn't get a I didn't get notice about the Dylan Dennis swap. Mm. I flew myself to Dubai because I felt something weird. Four o'clock, I said, hmm, Jake has there, Logan has there, Andrew Tate there, um, Anthony there, Deji's fighting Floyd, KSI there. I was supposed to be there to announce my fight with KSI. I ain't get my reservation. I ain't get my ticket. Hmm. Booked the flight. Four o'clock. Left at ten o'clock. That's why I was in his face in Dubai. He didn't know you were coming. Fuck no, he didn't know I was coming. You rolled up on KSI. Yeah. You're not scared of him. Why would I be scared of him? <laughs> I just I don't know. K KSI. What? Well, he's a YouTuber, right? Yeah, but he got hands. Does he got hands up? It depends. I never seen a, him fight. He I, got a chin, and that's gonna get hit. Uh -huh. oh, okay. I never seen him fight. I just KSI funny. is the guy that like Jake will fight. He'll fight tough competition. Yeah. He will. Yeah. KSI will say he'll fight. Remember, I said be what you are. Mm -hmm. He'll say he'll fight anybody else. But when there was an opportunity for me to fight KSI, he fought two dudes in the same day instead of fighting me. He had an option to fight me. Remember, he fought two dudes like in a They did like a pride tournament. They <laughs> fought like two guys. They just grabbed, yeah. just grabbed them from fucking Walmart. Hey, what you doing today? <laughs> he beat them both? 3,000. Yeah. yeah, he smashed them. Yeah. He got hands. He ready to fight two dudes. He, got no hands. he did like a pride that tournament. It may be your dog, but I'm like, I'm yeah. not. If you say you want to fight me for years and I don't even know you, you got my name in your mouth and now you finally got a contract on my desk. Yeah. And I agreed to some BS terms. He want me to weigh 175 on a dot. Don't be 174 because I'm out of the weight class. Even though the weight class cruiserweight goes up to 92, right? We're fighting for a cruiserweight belt, but I can't weigh anything more than 175 on the dot. 76, I'm overweight. 74, I'm underweight and I'm out of the division, right? Then I can only weigh 185 as I go to the arena. He only wanted me to rehydrate 10 pounds. He was trying to carve all, all the ways to try to give him an advantage, and he still didn't execute the contract. I found out on the internet that he was fighting Dylan Dennis. So oh, you never got to notice. Let me ask you this. No, that's why that's why I said oh, misfits. Got it. Got it. I will fight for I will fight for anybody that respects me and respects my time and paying me for who I am, right? And not for what you think. Because most people that think these promoters they ain't never bust a great. Mm. Right. Let me ask you this. I don't know. I, I never had like a contract like that with the boxing with the weight. So what, the restrictions that he put on you. Nobody. The, he he was promoting the show. Oh, Nobody so, else does that. So, so does it. Is it the same for him? He had the weight the exact same. But he was leaning down. So he was leaning down to try to go to a lower weight mm -hmm. at one point in time. So his journey is that he wants to be leaner. Mm -hmm. So he knows that I walk around and what I fought Jake at. So he wanted me to fight him at 175. I ain't fought 70 nothing since the UFC. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't the most special cuts. I weigh 200, 205 every day. Mm -hmm. And I cut down. Like, look at me. I weigh 200 right now. I got down to 170. I ain't fat. And right. I got a little extra on the side, right. but it ain't that much where you, you know, when 170, it was a 0% body fat. Like I was yeah. about to pass out, sleeping in the sauna, waking up 
they only lose 0.2 pounds. So he was trying to make it to his advantage, and they did that after we agreed upon the terms. Mm -hmm. We got to the number, we got to the weight, we got to everything, and then as the contract was coming, oh, his coach want to add the re I know it's a – I said the disrespect is what's going on right now. You're <laughs> asking a person that not only won many titles at scratch weight, but also wrestled many years – and had to wrestle two and three days at the scratch weight NCAA tournament. You're asking me to do a rehydration clause and weigh me in and not hydrate and come to the arena at four o'clock at 185. No, that's fucked up. Mm -mm. No. And he's not going to, what, what would he walk around? What do you think he walks around at? I don't know. I probably just, he probably walks around at 185. Yeah. Yeah, he probably walks around at 185. Yeah. So he was trying to get me to where he, I, I come back in his walk around way so I won't be 197 because they don't know the sport. They may not always mean I'm going to be bigger and better. I came in at 197 and it gets run down and I felt slow, right? Everybody's doing IVs. I'm like, all right, let me try this IV shit. I got up to 197 that night and I fought Ray McDonald and I felt slow. I was always scared to try the IVs because... I tried it once and that was it. Yeah, and you didn't like it, huh? I ain't, I, I don't know what it did for me. I just know mm -hmm. I gained a lot of weight fast and then I felt like um, I felt slow and I said... But yeah, I didn't want to be surprised in the cage with something your fights new. meant too much at right, the time. Right, right. It's not like your entry-level fights. Right. That's why I never did the Epsom salt bath. No, I did the bath. I started doing the bath. What's that do for you? I didn't do the Epsom salt bath, but... Um, the reason, hot alcohol? Uh, I, no, I just, use, I just use a hot... Hot bath. I, I found it one time when I was fighting Matt Linden. I was hanging out with my homeboy in the jacuzzi. Dude, that was funny. <laughs> Cause man you to not wear the deodorant on purpose. He tried to be slippery. Man, that dude. I trained with him. I trained. Yeah. I, I I read it. I heard the interview. But I trained with him. He was my dog, and I trained in Team Quest. But I never wanted to know him like that, so I was held my breath. Is yeah? Is so he my cool, cardio is he, was double. Is he cool people? No, he's real cool. I, I ain't real gonna cool. lie. I always thought he was kind of racist, but you say he's I not. I mean, he, he never either. was that way to me. You oh, know what okay. I mean? I mean, I could have oh, okay. been one of his. A couple right. few black friends. I don't know. <laughs> okay. But he always, I said at his house, he was always awesome to oh, me. Oh, okay then. His family. Well, so. I, apologize, I apologize for even thinking. I just, I, he just, I mean, sometimes you don't know. I don't know. I, because somebody gave that, that look a bad rap. Yeah. You I mean? trained, I trained with him and Dan Henderson and stuff before. I love Dan Henderson. Matt, like Matt Lindley was always, he was actually one of my favorite guys. I was going to join Team Quest because of Matt Lindley. Oh, for real? Yeah. I, was right. I take, I take my thoughts training. back. I'm I mean, my, you had to fight him. My, I had to fight him. Yeah, so so maybe you didn't like him because you had to fight him. No, but <laughs> I thought that about Wonder Boy too, and I had to apologize to him. He did. I like Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy, good dude. I thought he was fake. I think I played video games with him on on before. I think he's a good dude. So tell me the story. Uh uh. So I was cutting weight. I, I, I had to cut a lot of weight, but. But I was just hanging out in the jacuzzi with one of my friends. And I was like sore, like fuck, I'm just getting yeah. in the jacuzzi. I was in there for too long. I was in there for hours. Then I went to go weigh myself before, you know, before I went to bed. I lost like fucking 10, 15 pounds. Damn. In the jacuzzi, just hanging out in the jacuzzi. So from that moment on, I cut all my weight in hot water. But I never used like Epsom salt, alcohol. I just. Because they drain your minerals out, right? It yeah, just yeah. draws it out of you. Yeah, what I did was I, I sit in a hot bath and I, I left my arms out because my arms got flooded. If I when I had my arms on in there, I remember my arms getting flooded in the, in my fight, and so I I kept my arms out, and I just I just sat in a hot bath, and then it, it evolved into um sitting in a hot bath for like twenty minutes on, then getting out, putting my plastics on and 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 um, sweats, and wrapping up in a bunch of towels and blankets and landing in the bed for like 20 30 minutes yeah and then Did that feel better than the, the old school running I, yeah i hated it. i couldn't i couldn't i felt weak i couldn't cut weight like that no more i couldn't do the sauna man that's and the only way i cut weight i couldn't do it me. running i'm old school With I ran, on? running drilling wrestling yeah. hitting mitts running jumping right. jacks jumping how much running a lot of running what's the most running you did for a camp a camp jake fight First time, really. I, I tried training with Floyd. Training, he said. Floyd said, "You, you MMA guys don't like to run." <laughs> and I was like, "I was thinking, like, man, fuck you." <laughs> like, like, but was it was this? like it was at it was a gym in Miami. So you I were was, training with Floyd. Yeah. So so he um he introduced me my coach, which is now my coach now in GT, mm. and um he uh <laughs> he said shadow box. And I'm like, I don't want to fucking shadow box in front of Floyd so he can look at my shit and be trying to micromanage my technique. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So I shadow box right, right, then we got done. And he said, all right, cool, cool, glow up, glow up. All right, cool. He said, uh, yeah, MMA guys, I'm like to run. And I was like, nah, we don't. <laughs> he said, that's why I can fight whenever I want to fight because I never stop running. I've mm. been running the whole time. I never stopped. Even when I retired, I ran every day. He said, so when I'm going to train, I got more 
gas to do more perfect techniques, the more training, the more regimen, more bag work. So I can always do more because my cardio is way higher. Mm-hmm. He said, you wrestle like, the, rah, 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 like six minute miles, right? He said, but six minutes, you got six minutes of breathing at that pace, mm-hmm. right? But a fight's not six minutes. Fight's closer to 24 to 34 minutes. So I'm running longer. I may not be running as fast, but I get more cardiovascular. It's called cardio, right? Mm. So I get 30 more minutes of breathing in and out my lungs. So when I get in a fight, I can breathe better than you can. So he, so he's jogging like at a nice pace. Yeah, he's not running fast. He's running like six miles and shit like that? Um, Probably three or four. He's only running three or four? Sometimes he'll do six, seven. I mean, he can run it like from what GT said when they used, to, they used to box together when it was like 16, 17. They came up together and it was on like the same circuit. He said one time, like just competing with each other, he ran down five and he said he got Floyd and he ran five back with Floyd because Floyd wanted to run and Floyd said, fuck that. I'm running. When I get done with you, I'm going to run five more. So they would do like seven to 10 miles, but those are like very few in yeah. between. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're not Most doing of it every three, day, though. Three or four miles. That's three crazy. Or four That's miles. a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how was it training with Floyd? How was um, his hands? Floyd, Floyd uh, from a technical standpoint, is a master, and he was kind of more so looking at it. He more so was trying to introduce me to GT because he told GT, stay back in Miami. I want you to train him getting ready for this fight. So GT committed to training me that fight, that fight after, and pretty much until I get done fighting, he'll be training me. But um, he was more so watching, watching the mitts being held, and um, just picking out real small things, real like very small things, but they make a world of difference because in MMA, we're not, we're not governed to those same um, super technical laws, mm-hmm. right? If we punch it fast and the combination look kind of good, we... Our coach ain't going to bug us about it because they know we're going to wrestle, we're going to kick. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we make those excuses to throw mediocre techniques at. Well, in boxing, you don't have to worry about the leg kicks and the wrestling and stuff. We got to be right here because of that. But he showed me kind of a way you still can be mindful of anything that comes towards you but still have a good boxing stance. Mm-hmm. So, why Why you think Floyd is still um, doing like little exhibitions and stuff like that? Because he's making uh, a lot of money doing a, he making a lot of money doing a little exhibition. He's warming up. You know what I mean? He's so, not even training for him, huh? He don't even no, look like he's he in shape. He's training. He don't look like his last. He never stopped. But he he used to be like super ripped and stuff when he fought. And because he's he fighting guys a lot heavier. Not it's not very many. Like uh, think about this. Somebody told me this a long time ago. It makes sense. If you walk into a, a casino and I walk up on you, it's like damn, this motherfucker kind of big, right? To me, they may look like all right. He may fucking he may fight you. But Demetrius Johnson, damn, your son's his height, right? My son taller than him. Yeah, but what I'm saying, yeah. shout out to your son. I see him getting it in too. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's Nasty. trying. Yeah, yeah. The clown. If you ever need some help, let me know. Yeah, I need. I got some. Try. I got some old school tricks. I, I would right. love to help him out. But uh, he he need to he need to start eating red meat. He don't eat meat. He a, he a vegan man. He thinks that he's one in a billion. That he he thinks it don't bother him. And he lost he lost his first pro fight. I, and I feel like it was because he didn't have the energy to go. He had to lose a lot Does of weight. He supplement with any protein powder. I'm not sure. I, I don't hold his hand, and I yeah. and I told him, I told him he need to take some iron. He need to do some. He don't eat nothing but ass. He a good kid though. Tid do his groceries. <laughs> yeah, <he> could, <laughs> the episode groceries. ended. Hey. The episode ended on groceries. Hey, he a good kid. We leave it at that. <laughs> Yo, we we've been we've been on this for a minute. Before we let you go, I got one more thing I want to talk to you about. Yeah. I want to know what your your hardest fight you ever had to prepare for was. Wonder Boy. I, I, yeah, I knew you was going to say that because he's a kick Wonderboy, karate butt. Uh-huh. Not only that, because um, when I was younger, I wanted to do karate so bad. Like, I was karate. I want to do karate so bad. I went to this one karate league, and this story worth it. I went to this one gym in Ferguson, right where the riots at. We're actually directly where the riots happened at on that corner. That's where the karate gym was at. Master Kim. It was an old kung fu dude, had a black denim outfit on, black guy with a jerry curl. He was a karate instructor. <laughs> so it took me to my first karate. Day. Now, I don't know nothing. My dog, my dog LeGrand, served us in the uh, military, leg blown off. He an OG, right? He got promoted to black belt in karate. So he gave me his gi because he got promoted. Belt and all. I think the belts were like just for style. White belt today, purple, green. You can mix the belts up. I don't know the ranking system. I just want to do karate. So I go to my first day of karate practice, right? With a brown belt on, <laughs> white gi. <laughs> and to me, it's like the Karate Kid movie. And I'm just looking at everybody going, yeah, 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 right? And I'm just, I'm I'm in shock, so I won't, I don't move. And I'm just looking. And then this this karate instructor come up to me and go, 
Yeah, like yell in my ear. I bust out crying. I leave. I never do karate again. So then it was kind of like fuck karate. I hate this shit, right? So in the hood, like when we get into a fight, somebody's like, "Man, get that karate. I'm gonna beat your ass. You try to do this karate shit on me. I'm gonna beat you up, right?" So we disrespected it. Yeah. So now I realize, ah, oh, you gotta respect. You gotta respect. You gotta respect this. Gotta respect him. Not only, not only did I respect him, but I went to go find. The number one sport karate fighter now. At that time, was doing him every plot. He was the number one. He was a champion. He was everybody knew. I, I said, find me the number one dude right now. That's in the, in his world right now. Find me the person that beat him, Raymond Daniels. Right. Bring me him. Bring me the the guy that's the fastest, most explosive, that's faster than him, that's more explosive than him. Sage Northcutt. Now bring me in some scrappy guys that can throw hands and wrestle because he gonna be able to get up. He knows he has to get up from a takedown from me, right? So I brought in that guy, my dude Chris Payne. So I had that was my camp wow. and Biggie. So those guys stayed in character. They knew the character. I never won a round against Raymond Daniels. I'll be open to say that never. Why? You never won a round. Never won a round. Won? No. We're just doing straight karate. Well, I mean, we, we did, never did MMA. We never made it to that. Mm. We was just basically, I said, everybody's getting stopped with this with Warner Boy. I'm not going to get stopped with that. What's next after that? Because if I, after in wrestling, it's always something that's chain wrestling, right? right? I go to a high crotch. I don't get that. I go to a double head. I don't get that. I run the pipe right here. I don't get that. I pop out the back, go for a body lock. It's chains of it. Mm -hmm. He's not going to hit me with a step off side kick. He's not going to give me with a crescent kick. I watched it too well. He's going to miss these. What's next? He showed me what was next. And oh my God, these people, their minds, crazy. He got me prepared for the next level of Wonder Boy. So some things I saw, me and Wonder Boy talking the whole fight. I said, motherfucker, I know you finished trying to do the step off side. He said, no, I actually was going to do this. Oof, do this shit. <laughs> As I was talking to him, right? Then I saw I saw the step off side kick because what that looks like, it looked like, oh, I'm out of here, but they plant their foot and they it's a crazy fast kick mm -hmm. so i was following them i said i gotta walk them down i was following them and i saw it and it was like oh fuck and right when i saw it <clears throat> kicked me in the throat same kick but i read it but he mm -hmm. still got it off him he's the quickest welterweight mm -hmm. a lot of people don't like when i say that because they think a brother is supposed to be the quick i was the most explosive welterweight yeah he's the quickest welterweight i'm talking about i see him doing it and he's is there? Is there? Is there? Is, is there. he still fighting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's nasty. He's still fighting. Yeah, yeah, insane. So the fight IQ, that was the hardest, the hardest camp. The fight IQ I, you have is insane. No, nah, I, I, I always spent my career allowing people to think I was an African American athlete with an extra calf muscle and a powerful right hand, but I really was a nerd. I was stupid nerdy because I knew I didn't have the time that they had. I had kids and obligations. I didn't have a coach until 2015. I coached myself. I made Duke Rufus and Dean Thomas coach me, ask them. I said I need a team. And the first time I ever had a team in the camp is when I fought Kevin Gaslin. Mm -hmm. I made them train me. So before then, I was kind of doing it by myself. I had the amateur guy, Mike Rogers, and grew kind of in that area. But after that, I was just bringing guys in, setting up my own times. This day we spar, this day we wrestle, do strength conditioning, run, and just push each other and just do the drills I knew over and over again religiously. And then the second I can get to L.A., come and box a little bit and then come back home and just brainwash myself with the technique. Yeah. Unreal. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Train Unreal. yourself. I, I, don't, I don't have the discipline. Me either now. Because now I'll be one people to strength. Can I, you, going in the, you go to the gym and lift by yourself? No, hell no. I can't do it. I can't do it. I got a gym and I, I got I need a trainer. It's like, Someone to yell at you and get it going. I don't or just, know, or I just, just a buddy. Like the, or just somebody there with you to yeah. push you. I need somebody in there with me. I don't need, but I've become conditioned to want yeah. Yeah. somebody. To so, someone in there to kind of help you yeah. at least see it through. Yeah. Before we go, uh, your relationship with Askren and Chandler and wrestling, I feel like a lot of people overstep this part of your history. I started them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, break <laughs> was, that down was, real quick. I was Chandler's, Chandler, I started him. He was a freshman. Uh, Chandler was a spaz. Uh, him and Raymond um, Jordan. If you ever meet Raymond Jordan, Jordan is the most explosive, smoothest, um, elite level. He helped Jordan Barrows win a gold medal. Believe me, his only training partner during that time. Mm. So coach put me as a senior because I was the smoothest driller. I had the best drill regimen. He made me teach them how to wrestle. 
because both, it, both Oscar and them. Chandler. I took them underneath my wing as a senior, and I had to teach them how to wrestle. Chandler and Astro is the one that gassed me up. They was watching you and Pride. I didn't know what the fuck Pride was. I don't watch TV. So they was like, yeah, train this dude Eve. He was a man of pride. And they showed me your videos. That's all. So I get on the interviews. They educated me on with the sport because it was kind of new. Yeah. But to a wrestler, they, they like we focus on wrestling. So they were watching that in the spare time. So Askren did his pro debut with me um, on his car he promoted. Chandler, I took Chandler around every summer. So as freshman summer, we was in ATT. Then we went to Temecula. Then we went to um um uh, where did we go? Stream Couture. Mm-hmm. I got him his first fights. I got him his um, strike force contract. I got him his contract with belt tour. I managed him for a long time. Mm-hmm. And um, Really? Yeah, I started his career. Yeah. Do you manage yourself as well? Now I do. Yeah, now I do. I kind of kind of been behind the scenes a little bit. How's the relationship right now with Askren and Chandler? With me? Oh, I'm solid with him. Both of them. Ben, ben helped me win a lot of titles. But me and Ben used to kill each other in the room. Really? Murdering. He's he a good would, wrestler, huh? We killed each other in the room. When Ben came to University of Missouri, partly because of me, me and my roommate Scott Barker, he was an NCAA runner-up. I was the first Big Twelve champion. He saw what we were about to do. He wanted to be a part of it. He canceled Wisconsin, all those other oh, offers. Wow. He didn't even wrestle a senior year. He was already at the school wrestling with me. I wrestled. I wrestled against Ben in tournaments and stuff. He was just always in the mix. So me and Ben were supposed to be roommates in college. But I ended up having a son my junior year, so I needed my own space. But we wrestled every single day. Coach would just let people stop practicing and just watch us bust at eyes and, like, talking shit and fighting. And, like, we killed each other. And uh, I just had accountability to Ben that I don't have with nobody else because he know what I'm capable of. He's seen it more than anybody because I used to be the top wrestler. You know, then um, MMA-wise, I wanted to have that accredibility um, and no, sorry, accountability from somebody that knew me and that I knew that had nothing but, you know what I mean, positive things for mm-hmm. me. So I went to Duke Rufus to train with him, train with Showtime. Duke had beat um, all the Southpaw guys because his brother was Southpaw, so he know the formula. Got to realize I wrestled eight, I fought eight Southpaws in a row. Damian Maya, Wonder Boy, Wonder Boy, Kelvin Gaslam, um, Robbie so. Lawler. I, I'm the king at it. I show you. I can show you three techniques right now that a southpaw never beat you again. But he showed me how to master that, and I, I saw that Rubik's Cube. Cube. I I felt weird boxing people that or fighting people that was orthodox after going from you know what I mean Dung Young Kim to Kobe. Everybody was a southpaw that mm-hmm. I went against everybody. You know what I mean. And then the, the relationship with Chandler stayed the same. Always yeah, solid. but Chandler, Chandler, I had to let him flow. I had to let him do his thing. You know, um, I set his contracts up. I set him up nicely. Um, he had his first sponsorship when nobody was even sponsoring him. Had him on a developmental deal. The funny story is, I called Eddie Alvarez. I'm like, hey, hey yo, Eddie, I got this um, young fighter. He ain't your weight, but he ain't. You know what I mean, he he not gonna make it to you yet. You know what I mean? But I got a deal for him for Strike Force, and I got a deal for Bellator. What is your relationship with Bellator? Do you think it's a good place for him to be. He said, I love it. They paying me well. Da, da, da. I mean, you should tell me coming to Bellator, right? Eddie Alvarez. <laughs> That's who he beat for the belt. Yeah. Be Eddie Alvarez. But he did it by himself, though. He worked his way into this. So uh, he willed his way into it. He, from a freshman, sophomore, I trained him three summers before he even graduated college. And he had already had in his mind what he wanted to do and what he wanted to be. So we didn't even do amateur. He just went I pro. like him. He, he's a good dude. Yeah, good but dude. I, I I never met Ben. I don't know him that well. But you know, so I, I I didn't like his style. Even though I was a wrestler, I didn't like his style. But so I'm never- solid. You remember, remember we was in that doing that. Um, see, see, shout out to Ken Block. Uh, remember we was doing that um thing for that um CBD MD. Oh yeah. yeah. You remember remember y'all started talking about Ben. Yeah. What I say. I don't. I don't remember what the fuck you said. I said. I said. <laughs> I respect everybody having their opinions about anybody, but Brent Ben's my dog, yeah. and I won world titles with him, and that's my brother. Yeah. So I'm going to step away. Y'all can. It was Masvidal and every. Yeah. I mean, y'all can say whatever y'all want to say, yeah, but yeah. I want to let y'all know I'm not an accessory to this conversation. All right. No, I'm not going. I'm brother. not. Go, I'm not going to say anything about. Cause look, we listen. I've been knocked out. I've been knocked out, embarrassed, and hanging on ropes and shit. Hey. You know, I, I don't, no, I'm just saying at that time. But that's yeah, the kind of dude yeah, I am. Yeah. yeah. I didn't no, Yo, he ready to scrap right now. No, 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 no,
Nobody's trained with Kobe more than the Masvidal. Masvidal don't fuck with him, and he's my dog, and it's a good work anyway. He so didn't care, huh? he he said, "No, I don't care about that." But I called him out of respect to mm. see if he had a problem with it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think now, I fuck I, with being heavy, but being being push me as an athlete. I just I, I just um, personally me just watching, not ever meeting him. I just didn't like him how he lost to um, Jake because you, you know I, I didn't like Jake coming over fighting MMA guys yeah. I just well, didn't well, like ben that never, Ben never was known for a striker I know right? I know he's um, just making I money I thought that Ben would win because Robbie Lawler could knock him out he hit him with some shit I thought Ben was out of there right he just had found a strong chin and I thought he can just gas the kid out and yeah. just like Mazzano beat him took up. that yeah. chin I think yeah. that can happen yeah. I think that can happen. Someone could lose a chin like that? I think so. I think that's what happened to Chuck. No disrespect. Yeah. yeah. I think that's what happened to Chuck. After, after I knocked Chuck out, then Rashad looked like he killed him. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I Chuck, think, I think it's the thinking. It yeah. I think sometimes it's a thinking too. Sometimes you like, when you're in that zone, you like wired, like, yeah. like a little crazy. But yeah. when you get clipped, you kind of like, oh, I don't want to get clipped again. Same, same thing happened with, with Vandalay. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, um, Crow Cop. Fucking the science may be behind. I don't know. I never read into it. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I listen. I think that it can happen. But if you got a strong mind, because think about these K one guys, mm -hmm. they have the strongest minds. They get knocked out. All the motherfuckers want to fight me, boy. Yeah. I saw someone fighting kickboxing. Every kickboxing league you can think of is on my phone to fight. I'm, I want to do every martial art before I, before I walk away. So, I think kickboxing or Muay Thai. I don't think I got to do both. What you think? You ever did Muay Thai? Yeah, I, I I done Muay Thai. Like I, kickboxing. Brother? I've done kickboxing. It was more. Is K one? Is that Muay Thai? Key elbow. No, you couldn't have. It ain't Muay Thai. Then. You're right. Then. I never done Muay Thai. Then. I never done Muay Thai. I done K one though. So I was gonna ask you because I feel like I should. For me to do that 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 striking form. It don't pay enough. It don't pay enough, yeah. bro. Will you ever do bare knuckle? Um, I I started bare knuckle. I didn't know that. At 30 street fights. <laughs> that's, 30, <laughs> that's bare knuckle as it gets. It no, to I'm to go it. back to that, I would have to be willing to take my mind back to where I was at. I was, right. I would have killed you then. I, I just don't think it pays enough. Uh, for the, I don't, I like what they got going on. I really, I really like my dog Perry. I like his position over there. Yeah, I, yeah world champion. And yeah. I feel like if anybody want to act like that form of fighting is not the most, yeah. Actual real form of fighting, you cannot say it's not. Yeah, hundred percent. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, they ain't got no protection. It's a full scrap. Yeah. yeah Are so they real, doing bare knuckle MMA now? I think yeah. I saw. I think yeah. I saw something. Like that what on I got something going on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's uh, yeah. that's bare knuckle MMA, huh? Yeah. So I, I, they asked me to do it a couple times. I thought about it, and then it's just like, I got delivered from that mindset as a kid. I was black out. I don't remember. I knocked a lot of people out when I was younger. Like, mm. young kids should knock people out. I knocked people out cold. So it's like, for me to go back into that, I think I should have brought some of that into some UFC fights. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But I, I, re, I rebuked. You know, back in the day, rebuked, I rebuked and got delivered <laughs> from that because I was I was on the path to destruction. I know, so but it's a sport. I know, I know what you're saying. I don't know if I can get there into that mind yeah. space to do it because right now I think about it as a sport. At this is a sport like me. I used to be very religious, and now I'm more spiritual. And um, in and, and my own opinion, I found out that I don't think I don't think God care if we win or lose a fight. I don't that, think he does. I don't think he. I don't think he cares. I think he care if we don't learn a lesson because I won a lot of fights and I didn't learn a lesson. Yeah. I gave you grace, my dog. You was living real filthy, right? Yeah. In the six weeks you trained hard, didn't win that fight. The seven years you was on fire, won that fight. Mm -hmm. That was a harvest. It's just the, the fruit falling off from the seven years you ran hard. Right. So I think I agree with you. He wants us to learn lessons and everything. Yeah, because yeah. we think, we like God think more, I feel like he, he thinks more on a bigger picture mm -hmm. than what we think. Like we I can't agree. even, we can't even understand. Like, well, like, he said, our thoughts are not, uh, my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. Right. Not. Right. That means equal sign, you are not on the other side of that. Mm -hmm. So why would we even try? Right, because yeah. you know how some people they get mad. Like say somebody died, God forbid, somebody lose a family member in a car accident or messed up way, and they, they and I, I've heard people like get mad at God and cuss God, and I'm like, I'm like, you know, what I'm saying like you, God don't think, you know, you can't think, you can't think like that. They, yeah, I agree. They, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I just don't know how to explain yeah. it. But they just, no, they just, right. they just hurt, and they just don't. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like anytime somebody don't yeah. understand, when you lack understanding, right? Right. We left to resort to just. 
yeah. what we do. And sometimes it's ignorance, sometimes it's just whatever. Yeah. But right. to under the understanding is that you can't understand. Right. It's hard for us to accept that. Right. I got I got saved on my first day of training camp when I first fought uh Vanderlei Silva. When I when I fought Vanderlei Silva, um the time he knocked me out. I think I had fought him in a tournament the same day I fought Chuck before. So the first day of training camp, everybody thought I went crazy. I some some I ain't gonna go all into it. I told yeah. story before, but I had some some problems and and I thought that God saved me so I can so I can be champion. But uh I was a single parent. He he I was, I later found out that he did that so I could be a better father to my son. Yeah. Cuz I was letting anybody babysit my son. I go over to Japan. I didn't have a good relationship with my son. Blah blah blah. But I thought that oh, this is I, my first day of training camp for Vanley and I I and I and I get the Holy Ghost spirit, go through this whole change. And then I'm like, oh, God did that so I could be champion. And I yeah. got knocked the fuck out. I'm like, yeah, oh, that's I've had those deals run. where I, I tighten up everything everybody everybody thought was loose, right? And, mm-hmm. I, and I feel like I did everything. And then the lesson still came and you get confused. You know, yeah. I, I try not to question God yeah, because it, he already told me that he ain't going to think or, you know what I mean, act mm-hmm. like me. But those lessons at the time, you don't understand them. But my mom always just told me, just keep on living. Yeah, yeah. Right. Keep on living out to get it so I'm making sense. Yeah. But that's dope. You got that wisdom. Because, I got that wisdom. It's the most yeah. confusing thing I've ever been through. But but you know, I got that wisdom. But I, I stepped away from religion when I kept getting fucked over by Christian people. Yeah. And then I just started researching, researching, and I said, you know what? You know, religion is man made. Yeah, I just believe in um I, I believe in God. I believe I'm a Christian. I believe in um Jesus, but more importantly than anything, I believe in love. Yeah. It's love and hate, the two emotions. There's nothing else. Everything is a version of it, right? So if you love somebody, you won't hurt them. You won't kill them. You won't take for them. You won't be lazy, right? You won't be stingy. What's the root to all evil? The root to all evil is The love, love of money. No, greed. Mm-mm, the root to all evil greed. is the love of money. No, the root to all evil is greed. One category of greed is wanting too much money. Another category of greed is one too much women. Another category of greed is eating too much food. Blood. It's all the right? vices. All the vices. Everything that you do too much of, you're greedy in. That's the root to all evil. So if you find evil present, what if it has nothing to do with money, right? Then you can't say. It's I've evil. always, I've always read the the root to all evil is the love of money. That's greed. what I've always read. That's that's what people equate greed. It, 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 could, greed, am, it could amplify cause, the cause, greed. Cause, cause, but the same, greed, you guys are both saying the same Because greed could yeah. be the to one and more money, one yeah. more things, material. Same concept. Though. Sometimes you want more time, mm. right? Right. I want you to be around me too much. Man, don't, don't tell me that. Don't tell me that because I'm because I'm greedy. I'll be one more pussy. Hey, I don't don't tell me. I don't want to think I got kids. No, I know what you mean. <laughs> I don't want to think struggle. that I'm. I don't want to think that I'm. I'm uh, evil because I want more pussy. I'm not greedy. I don't want me, all the pussy. Let me tell you this. You to an excess would be how, a problem. How, how much? How much? Um, how much evil has um the excess of pussy got you? How many positions did it almost get you in? How many times did it actually make you more focused and run down a bag even harder? Right. It distract us. Because the dude told me this. You're never going to lose a bag chasing success, right. but you lose the bag chasing, chasing pussy. some pussy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree I agree with you. I don't be chasing mm-hmm. pussy like that. I don't. Yeah. But but you know what I'm saying? I, I, this is how I feel. I feel like when I get old, I ain't going to be wanting that much pussy, and I won't get all the pussy I can get now while I'm still young. Hit <laughs> dude! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Think about it. I'm, I, I want to live to like 80, 85, 90. One form of greed is, is one too much money. But in love and hate, let's get back on track because okay, I know okay. you're going in the pussy thing. Okay. All right. I'm on the pussy. So so the the hate is the other side of being lazy, hating on you, right? Comparing yourself, True. right? That means you hate what you are. You want to compare yourself to somebody else. And it's clear, do not compare yourself. And it's reasons why, right? So spirituality is understanding God. Understanding that's why I respect every religion, right? I respect the discipline of most religions. That's not even the one. Ramadan, I'm doing it next year. I respect the discipline of the Muslim religion. They discipline, right? You got to respect I ain't it. never lacked. I ain't never lacked when I was disciplined, right? That's when I succeeded. So you got to consecrate yourself. I'm going to do Ramadan next year. And I'm not a Muslim. But it's about love and it's about hate, right? So Christianity is not the only religion that gives a bad flag. But sometimes when people self-exalt themselves... They put themselves on top of the Empire State Building. Now when you do that little BS, 
that fall is long and everybody can watch you and it's very visible, right? But God never put you up there anyway. You put yourself up there. Yeah. So the haughty spirit is before what? Before a fall. That's why that's why I tattooed this right here. All praise be to the most high. All praise. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's All it. Praise. I mean, at the end, at the end of the day, the idea is to stay balanced, is to stay humble and yeah. to remember that there's blessings in your life and the things that got you to where you are are not just from you, but from someone kind of giving you the right path and it's the path's there. It's up to you to go down it. You know what? One of my so. favorite, one of my favorite uh, boxing trainers, Nito Boxing from Hawaii. He told me, I hate, I hate when boxers, you know, try to involve God in fights. Like God ain't going to help you beat someone up. Jesus ain't going to help you beat someone up. He's like, don't pray to Jesus to go kill someone. Pray to Jesus that you are safe. He is safe. And you have a good bout, a good fight. And you know, everything goes the way it needs to be. Cause yeah, you're going in there to kill someone, but you're going in there for a sport. This isn't like, you know, the days of just trying to kill yeah. someone to kill someone. So I think everybody now in today's time has a good mentality and a good understanding like yourself. You know, you weren't always this way, speaking, speaking the right terms, speaking the right mentorship to the next generation of fighters. Same with you. There was a time where both of you guys were running down Hollywood. Boulevard. We was in the movie. Yeah. You, know? you can't look at the scene of the movie when we in it. Yeah. Sometimes you got to freeze a scene, take yourself out as an actor and be the director. My boxing coach said, this is the scene you're in right now with this girl, this situation, this mm -hmm. camp, this fight, right? What's the ending? Cause it's going to have an ending and your choices. We got free will. We don't need creatures that do yeah. right. So when you look at the story from the outside in, is this scene right here, what I do in this scene is going to affect the outcome at the end. For sure. Like you said, God, think about the big picture, right? right, right. It's hard to do that. I started doing that yeah. and it started helping me out. But now we can look back at our past because we're not in that current scene. We in a new scene right now. Mm -hmm, right. So we can look back and say, in this scene, I could have did this shit differently. I wish I would have did this or I'm glad I did that because that came back down the road. When the motherfuckers was trying to take me down, they couldn't. Yo, that's deep, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, off, off this, off this, I want you to tell the upcoming fighters, the new ones, just, just watching this, because you just dropped a bunch of knowledge yeah. on there. One, one, one thing of advice for somebody. One thing of advice for a newcoming fighter, uh, be patient with the process. Uh, don't don't just get off the couch and um, do the technique you see. Don't think you're supposed to get instant fame. Instagram, instant gram. A gram you can see instantly shows you what, it's happened, but it don't show you the work that it took to get happened. Be patient with the process. Um, and if it's for you, you will see. If it's not, be okay with that. You know what I mean? Fighting for everybody. You know? But find out, though. Train hard enough to find out if you're going to buckle, if you're going to quit. Um, but enjoy that process. Be patient with it. And if you if you hang in there, I, like I said before, the up-and-coming guy is going to eventually be the champion as long as they don't quit. Hey, y'all heard it here. If y'all know somebody that need to hear that message, make sure y'all share this and, and send it to them. I want to thank Tyron Woodley for coming on Fade On Sight. Man, you're a legend. I appreciate you, G. Man, I appreciate you. Too, you. I, I appreciate you're a legend, too. He is Cause, a legend. Because you a GOAT, man. You ain't never been scared to do no type of business. And um, you're a young cat, and you've been, you been grinding out here, and I see you, and um, I appreciate you. Man, he's been, he's been, he's it's been. Easy. Man, easy with guys like you in my corner. <laughs> man, he's been 100 with me since day one, man. Yeah. I love him. Yeah, you guys, you guys are goats, and I and I definitely want to tell YouTube right now. We appreciate everybody who's helping us. We just hit twenty thousand subscribers. Oh hell yeah! We have you know That's our quick. Jackson podcast show. Damn. We have Fade on Sight. Yeah, we have the Ryan Checkler flip the flip the script and my show, which I occasionally I do when we have some guests here. But huge thank you to the MMA community rallying yeah. behind Rampage, a true icon of the sport who's doing this for the community. Obviously, it's not always the easiest to sit here with two world champs. Most of the guests we've had are world champs, but to be here and be blessed and be able to soak up the game and both of you guys at this point in your life, it's been a blessing for me, the brand, Jackson, and as well as all the MMA community. So definitely want to say love and show support for everybody. We're doing this for them and it's going fantastic because of him. So we're definitely blessed and, you know, to have a, a champ like this on the show and I appreciate how humble and respectful. This is amazing. All love too. All love. <laughs>